there. Today, we're continuing on event scripting. Is that right? That's right. And uh, I've been doing a fair bit of preparation for this. So uh, hopefully that, yeah, hopefully uh, you find it as exciting as I do. Oh, I'm I super excited now. Last week, we spoke about maybe staying in the depths. I know it, it is possibly your favorite FromSoft map of all time, maybe tied with Black Gulch. Um, so mm -hmm. it seems like a mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, Black Gulch is great. common knowledge. Yeah. Seems like a nice place to stick around and uh, learn a little bit of event script modding. Totally. And I've done a bunch of updating to Soulstruct to make things a lot more readable. Uh, I've added some quality of life stuff. I've also added some kind of vanilla ID documentation to the depths in particular to help us get started and all these, you know, names that I've written down that can be imported automatically into the event script. How does that sound? That sounds fantastic. That sounds awesome. Yeah. Um, okay, so do you have, is the new version publicly available? No, not yet. So I'll oh. send it over your way. Uh, okay. I think we, there are two other things I think would really help us at this point. Uh, the first is the debug executable for Dark Souls Remastered. Mm. Just going to make things a lot easier. Okay. I'm going to send you, it's on, it's on Nexus. Uh, this is the version created by Horcrux, which basically just restores a lot of the debug menu features that were removed from Remastered, you know, relative to the prepare to die edition. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it's super straightforward, fortunately. Uh, you know, there's always a bit of moral ambiguity about the distribution of the, the hacked executable. But yes. This is fortunately just a DLL, so you just have to pop it next to your, your exe file in the folder nice. there, and you're good to go with all the debug stuff, including, you know, launching into whatever map you want and things like that. So, yeah, that'll be a mainstay, I think. Very good. The other is a bit more, um, you know, yeah, an indicator of very serious event scripting, particularly when using kind of my tools, and that's uh, actually a Python editor program called PyCharm. All right, PyCharm. So I've just sent you a link to that as well if you want to grab the community edition. This might take you know a couple of minutes to download, but it'll really be worth it. And I've been doing some uh, a little bit of mucking around with Soulstruct to make it as easily compatible with PyCharm as possible. And that's going to let us do a lot of autocomplete. You know, you're going to have syntax error detection, and oh, you know cool. you can just start typing. You'll see all the possible instructions or names popping up that you might be looking for while you're writing event scripts. That's awesome. And that's going to be super useful. And finally, I will send you the latest version of Soulstruct, which is right here. I believe we sub we managed to transmit a zipped executable over oh, yeah. Discord last time without right. much issue. So uh, hopefully that stays the same. Let's see here. I'll take a sec to come through. <laughs> Just default installation options. I guess I could do associations dot dot pi mm. files. Seem to have lost you. Oh, uh oh. Uh, I think you're. Uh, you're hello? I don't know if you can still hear me. Your pi charm uh, download uh, might oh, be oh. choking the bandwidth a little bit. <laughs> uh, oh, it looks like that's done, as far as I can tell. Yeah, it is done. Uh, how did I? How did I not? Hello, hello. Hello. I can oh, hear you again. You know, hmm, that's weird. I have a push to mute, which is Alt. If I hold it. And, but somehow I got stuck in the hold position I, when I alt tabbed or something. Hmm. So, strange. yeah. But anyways, fixed now. And yes, PyCharm is installing. And uh, right. Let's see if if it will let me download. Potential dangerous download. Oh, let me download it. No problem. <laughs> Grim virus all over again. No problem. Uh, I've had a lot of opportunity. My, my virus is basically all over the world at this point. Wow. Um, all right because yeah. <laughs> you know everyone everyone has downloaded Soulstruct at this point i'm sure make sure you guys clip that just keep that handy you never know um jet brains community edition terms yes anonymous statistics sure okay pycharm is loaded up is it so this is kind of like like visual studio but for python exactly yeah this That's... is a program i use you know I, I, I eat it, I dream it. I, uh, it's my wow. one of my um, major yeah, tools that I use in, in all of my jobs, but it's extremely, it's my favorite Python editor. I think I just saw Hot Pocket mention that um, he uses it at work as well. So nice, nice. High Very five cool. for that Hot Pocket. <laughs> Let yeah. me see, I'm trying to remember if I had a folder for Soulstruct or if it's just... Uh, so yeah, I wouldn't, don't click this through just yet. The, f the folder we're gonna open in PyCharm is going to be the new Soulstruct project, <gasps> the folder that we'll create using the new executable. Okay, and then once we, once we create that project, then I'll put the Soulstruct EXE in there? Or um, You can run the Soulstruct EXE from anywhere, but we're gonna create a new 
kind of project folder for our new like from scratch because then yep. it's going to take advantage of all the new tools i've created for um you know generating these vanilla event scripts in this python there syntax is. that have all these names inserted and everything okay cool uh let yeah. me whoop. so that okay. test folder yeah yeah, yeah we don't need that up in there you dump that I just couldn't remember if I had a folder of Soulstruck, but I found it. It's <laughs> I've been pasting stuff all over the place, so. Uh, okay. All right. So, step one. Are we going, doing a PyCharm project then? Uh, not yet. First of all, we'll run Soulstruct to, to create the new project folder, and then we'll gotcha. open that Soulstruct project folder in PyCharm. Ah, I see, I see. And it's going to, you know, find all these, quote, Python scripts inside, which are actually our event scripts, which are written to look like Python. And it's going to give us all the abilities that it would normally give to real Python to our event scripting with autocomplete and syntax checking and everything. Fancy. All right, so we'll make a new test. New test. Yeah, and we, <laughs> you can call this whatever you want. Yeah, new, new test. Oh. Ultra, uh, ultra depths. Safe. Mega depths. Super deep depths. Okay. Oh, wait. Uh. Oh, yeah. Dark. Yeah, remastered folder import wait it was import yes or no uh yes to everything here yes everything. so the left option yeah it's gonna yeah <laughs> obviously uh in, a, in an ideal world i would consolidate this intro sequence a little bit but so like a single yes like yeah. do everything <laughs> yes <laughs> exactly oh thank you i left my water and uh, bloody brought it for me so now i have water that's good hydrate everybody hydrate just took a swig myself. Cheers to that. Very nice. Cheers to modding. Very nice. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right. Soulstruct's open. Got a new project made. Yeah. So if we take a look in Soulstruct in the events tab, uh, which is what we were looking at last time. Again, this is my little homebrew uh, kind of text editor that's in there. <laughs> Sorry. I um, I got a little... Oh, yeah. The lag on that. Yeah. That's, <laughs> that's a classic thing. It's just, is, is you know... It? <laughs> creating these uh GUIs with Python is so <laughs> laggy and you know so unrecommended that yeah you literally get a bit of display lag when you're dragging it around. Yeah, it's yeah, okay. Anyway, uh, sorry, um repeat what you said. I, I I tuned out. Just to make sure it works, so let's look in the events tab in Soulstruct here. Events this is what we tab. were doing last week. Yep. Yep. Yep, at the top. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And take a look at the depths if you change that drop down. Right. Uh, I know the font's a bit small here, but don't worry, we won't actually be using this very much today. Oh yeah, let me adjust my my desktop. Yeah, okay, that looks also. good. Yeah, looks good. Okay. Yeah, so you can see in there, you know, we've got a bunch of indentation. We've got a bunch of uh, named flags rather than just all these numbers that you, you have to figure out on your own. So mm -hmm. uh, we're going to open that in PyCharm now, mm. and it's going to be a lot easier to edit. The one thing we'll lose in PyCharm is the kind of custom coloring of some instructions I've done here, but mm -hmm. that's yeah the one thing, and it's more than made up for by everything else. Very so good. if we go back to the PyCharm dialog and just go open project and point it to new test, uh, let's see, desktop, mm -hmm. soul struct, new test, just the folder? Yeah, just the Local. folder, new test. Yeah. Mm, see, there's all these dialogues asking whether I want to trust something that you've given to me, <laughs> and that's, yeah, that's fine, I, I'm going to trust I, I it. take the blame for uh, this one. Yeah, this is a global pie charm thing, I swear. They're not just detecting my, my virus. Okay, so all here right. we are, events. Here we are. And then yeah, so tending. here we can see, um, yeah, so all these quote again, Python scripts with the suffix .evs.py. So this is exactly what we were just looking at in the Soulstruct window. But now you can actually do things like, um, say just, just for, you know, demonstration, if you start a new line somewhere and start typing uh, any instruction you want, like display. Display. Then you can, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. Set display yeah, so mask. There you go. I remember we were doing that to, to so, hide. So you're getting all that parts. autocomplete? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. And you can do other things like you can control click on something and you'll jump to where it's defined. So if you control click on one of the instructions, you'll jump to where that's defined. And you get a, sometimes you get these doc strings. Not everything has a doc string. You know, it's just stuff that I happen to have written so far. And of course, uh, all the newer games like Elden Ring have a lot of undocumented events. Uh, that's things that Hot Pocket and Fifth Matter working on. Yeah. But yeah, this is a little more creator friendly, uh, particularly if you're not, you know, if you haven't got every possible function memorized yep. by this point, like, yep. like I kind of do. Um, <laughs> we also have indentation. So I've, uh, where it's kind of safe to do so and not too risky, I've replaced some of those line skips with indented code, like we were kind of writing ourselves Ooh. last time. 
So where you see uh, if something, and then yeah, you get yes. an indented block. Yeah. Just a lot easier to read and edit. And, and again, I think last time we already had to do a little bit of line skip modification mm -hmm, just mm -hmm. to be safe. Yep. So yeah, this is kind of primo ready to go for, for modding event scripts. And what we can do here, uh, PyCharm actually by default will save these files automatically as you edit them. So that you don't even need to press Control S. Uh, and when you've made a change here in PyCharm that you want to export to the game, all you have to do is go back to the Soulstruct window and click Reload and Export, Ooh. which is combined into one button on Very the event nice. script in the bottom right. Yep. And that will reload the text editor here and pull in any changes we made in PyCharm and immediately export Put that, it to the game. just that event script to the game and we're good Ooh. to go. And you'll see kind of a flash in Ooh, flash. to confirm that it's worked. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So yeah, nice. that's it. We're, we're ready to, to go here. Uh, and we can do map editing. We can use Map Studio for that, which we looked at uh, both on the last, I think, two sessions we did. Mm -hmm. Or mm -hmm. you can do you can do it through Soulstruct as well. If you don't mind not having that 3D visualization, mm -hmm. you can do things like run around in the game, and just stand where you want to place something, and then copy those coordinates. Right. Right. Uh, maybe we should fire up and get get a feel for how the uh, debug um, controls work. Yeah. Like if Sounds we want to do something like that. Like we can create yeah uh, with the debug there's also a, a kind of a config file next to the dll you can edit to change some defaults i don't know <laughs> what am i looking at here <laughs> that is an excellent question <laughs> i wonder if it's because i changed the zoom on my what is okay it's got <laughs> uh hmm yeah it's it was... not even Whoa, yeah, was... we might need to load into the game uh yeah i think and it is change the resolution zoomies. in game yeah, possibly let's see. Well, hmm. wait, the, whoa, okay. Yeah, maybe, um, model viewer, I can read that. Do you know which? We, we want the second option. The second. Yeah, okay. Model viewer will crash the game. I never, I don't recommend oh, selecting that. And then I have several uh, more. And that will be depths right there, the first one. So we can actually load into the depths by choosing the first option there. Oh, well, heck, there you go. Yeah, this is like, oh Yeah, it's God. like vertically compressed or horizontally rather. Uh, uh, it, it looks kind of. I'm, I'm getting a bit, of, you know, a PS1 vibe off this. It's kind of cool. <laughs> <laughs> it mu it must be the Windows like zoom settings or something. Let me let me do full screen here, and then we shouldn't have to worry about that. Hopefully. Yeah, sounds good. There we go. There we go. Oh my goodness. Okay. <laughs> oh, so this is like what a default debug character? <laughs> That's right. Yep. This is character. Oh, at 9,000, I think, is the character ID. And one of the first things I always do in a new setup is go and change the params for this debug character to ah. something a little little less unwieldy. But it's funny seeing what they went with for debugging. <laughs> no Estus, like empty Estus flask. Yeah, Come but uh, you should have a ton of divine blessings possibly in your inventory, but just not equipped. Oops. All of this we can change though. And yeah, then maybe that's the first thing we should do actually, because we're going to be seeing this guy a lot. Oh yeah, sure. That's uh, That would be a character initialization param, is that right? Exactly, and we can edit that just straight from Soulstruct. Oh, we will need to restart the game to see the changes there, so we sure. may as well just Alt F4 while we're doing it. I did it. All right, Soulstruct. So using... yeah, just like Hot Pocket says, that seeing that character in a video is a dead giveaway for the <laughs> DLL. Nice, nice. So uh, using what we've learned in past episodes, by the way, which uh, episode two is up on YouTube, and there's a third one that needs to go up as well. Um, but I think. The first one is when we really dug into params a lot. Um, That's right. I think yeah. so. So, any character? Yeah, here we go. Wait, where's character? We just want characters up the top. Okay, okay. So yeah. it's a little. I've renamed these categories a little bit just to be a bit more friendly to people ah. who don't know the uh, sometimes odd nomenclature that FromSoft uses. Gotcha, um, gotcha. But yeah, and all of these Japanese names we're seeing, these are actually in the game code for Dark Souls One. They were stripped out for Elden Ring, and we've had to kind of add them back in, but. Uh, yeah, having Japanese is better than nothing. Fair enough, yeah. And we can jump straight to ni ID 9000, so you can you could scroll down or you can just use the search bar at the top to go straight to 9000. Oh, uh, we, I don't see a 9000. There's a 7200, 10,000. Oh, interesting. This looks like the not the correct param. Hang on, let me look at mine. Why has that changed? Oh, sorry, it's players, not characters. Yeah, ah, so players. I've confused there myself there. Yeah, mm -hmm. characters is the equivalent of the NPC param. But yeah, you can see. Gotcha. Yeah, a bit of a nine thousand. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. That's it. 
So yeah, everything here is what we were seeing in game just then. Uh, by the way, first thing we can do with a new Soulstruck project, if you go up to tools up the top in the Soulstruck window, mm -hmm. and you go to, let me check myself, uh, the param submenu and you click rename all items and equipment from text. Yeah, just the first one. Yep. Does it take a sec? Uh, no, it should be oh, done. Oh, it should be done. And okay. now, if you, yeah, just just click to change to look at another row. It just needs to refresh. Let's see. Like uh, click nine nine thousand and one, for example. Yeah. Should it's the Japanese be? Uh, yeah, it should be. And we might need to reload the whole param at this point. Let's see. I click. Yeah, I click two see if it characters. We're missing anything. We do it live here, by the way. So, how can mm. anyone code using kanji? Kanji is good. <laughs> um, it doesn't, doesn't seem to be working anymore for some reason. I'll huh. have to take a look at that, but that's okay. Not a huge deal. Uh, if we want to find out what it is, you can just right-click on the weapon ID and jump to oh. the uh, the thing as well. Probably something to do with all the Elden Ring kind of compatibility stuff I've been doing. I think I broke it. Uh, Oops. <laughs> no, I think I uh, I may have accidentally. When I was trying to click off one of the menus, I think I scrolled over to the scripts and clicked like something that was choosing the game. And, and I was like, oh, I don't want to do that. I'm just going to reset, <laughs> restart it. Cause I... Yeah, probably a good idea. Yeah, that, that, I think you might have clicked open console, which um, is a very experimental feature that lets you do some quick Python console editing while the window's open. But yeah, very risque stuff. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right, new test. All right. Uh, do I need to copy stuff if we already have a project or no? Yes. Oh, I think, yeah, it, you can click yes or no. It'll already be in there. That's just, I think, because I, I just added that option this morning. I oh, probably I haven't checked whether you actually need to do it again or not. Okay, params. There we go. I'll try doing, before I load anything, rename all. See what happens. Players. Yeah, it doesn't seem to be doing anything, not even raising an error. So I must have accidentally broken that, but it's okay. It's a All small good. convenience thing. Uh, if we go, just, you know, helps you figure out what IDs you want, but you can just go right. look in the in the actual param itself. So weapon 30600, if you right click on that and go to params weapons, then you can see the name. There you go. Yeah, next Some to great the thing. Sword. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, what do I want? So yeah, we can, we can outfit however you want. I recommend, you know, for debugging, I usually like to go with a one melee and one ranged weapon, because often you want to shoot things to test them. I would like a claymore. Let's see. Mm. Uh, Good choice. Wait. Okay, so how do I search here? Can I search here? Uh, um, for, so, like yeah, a th little bit of a roundabout thing here. If we go to text and we go to the weapon text category, we can search that for text. Ah, I see, I see. And, and that'll be the matching ID that we're looking for. So yeah, weapon slight names. Hack. Yeah, weapon right, names. Context. Um, Claymore. And it is case sensitive. Ah. Claymore. There we go. 301. I'm just copying that. <laughs> <laughs> Copy. And then now we go change go. our player 9000's starting right hand weapon to that. That's right. How do we put nothing? Uh, no weapon. We do minus one. Okay, minus one. Yeah. Minus one easy broken link yeah yeah uh, ignore that i'll do minus one in the left hand there i'll do grass crest shield of course grass crest shield plus 15 why not <laughs> why not Perfect. all right um sure we can do a bow let's do a bow um do composite bow whoops wrong field composite bow plus 15 of course well Actually, I'm not going to do plus 15. We'll do plus 5. Uh, yeah, often you run into a situation where you're trying to play test an area, but you just kill everything in one shot. <laughs> one <laughs> shot everything. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, let's do... So there's armor names too? Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's right. We could do um, the gold hemmed set. Gold... Uh, is it gold hyphenated? Gold hemmed? I think it's hyphenated. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, hood. Oops. For those that might have just joined that don't know what we're doing, we have set up the debug. Um, we, we put in the debug exe for Dark Souls Remastered, which allows you to access the debug menus in there. They have a default debug character, and it's got all this crap on it, but we are modifying what that character starts with so that it's a little more wieldy and something I'm familiar with and like. So giving him full gold hemmed. 
Uh, okay, so is it 462, 463? Yeah, okay. That's right, yeah. Each set has offsets of 1,000. Roger that. 4,000. I guess, uh oh I think you wanted three, uh, two for the for the hands and three for uh, the legs, like 462. Oh, four, yeah, six, <laughs> yeah, I skipped yeah. ahead there. <laughs> All right, and then we'll get You can try to equip a leg armor to hands and you'll get some interesting results. All right, is there a, oh, good names and just large arrow? Uh, that's actually a weapon. Uh, projectile <gasps> ammo is, is uh, oh. counts as a weapon. There you go, large arrow. And that's that was critical for survival mode because you can craft arrow weapons. So I, I hacked into that so you can craft nice, uh, nice. normal weapons as well. That, that's the only thing that's actually considered a weapon that you could craft? Exactly. Or, uh... Yep. Uh, and if you scroll down a bit further, in addition to the arrow slot, there, there'll be another field in there for the number in oh, that cool. slot. Yeah. Arrow slot and then arrow slot count. Nice. 999. Nine, nine. Of course. <laughs> uh, okay. Bolt slot. Rings. Uh, uh, yep. Sure. I think yeah. by default it already has Havel's ring. That's ring 100, which nice. is pretty useful. But nice. uh, yeah. And I think the Covenant of Artorias also for use, just testing convenience. Okay. Um, you might want to change the goods as well. You could, you could auto equip say 99 divine blessings or estus estus flasks or whatever you want in the uh good slots mm, good slots yeah uh just by default it's just an empty estus flask i think let's see Edicus, uh, what i don't know my i haven't done i haven't practiced my my elixir elixir oh there you go Edicsa. Edicsa. <laughs> sad oh that's not sad okay got it Nice. All right. So then, what was that? A uh, two forty. Good slot. Good names. Here we go. Wait, what's two forty then? Oh, that's divine blessing. Is the elixir? Uh, okay. Uh, then yeah, we've already got that. So we'll do ninety nine of those. Good slot count. Ninety nine. And then you can see the uh, stats are here as well. But they should be all good. Uh, S told. <laughs> no, fuck. My katakana is terrible compared to hiragana. But anyways, um, I mean, this is fine, honestly. Uh, 99 is divine blessing. I'm probably going to be running around like invincible for now. So exactly, yeah. Let's do that. And then save params? Export yep. params? Just save? Uh, so, uh, export will save automatically as well. Yeah, save is just to the Soulstruct project data, gotcha. and export will send it off to the game. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, one more thing, but just before we boot up the game, mm -hmm. uh, just we, there's a file next to the debug DLL in the game folder that we can edit to uh, for convenience. Like if you want the player to be invincible or hidden, like invisible to enemies automatically. Oh, nice. Uh, which is one, one thing I do a lot while modding as well. It's the game.properties. Properties, yeah, so if, yeah. you, if you open that in a text editor, any uh, any old thing will do. I... Oh, you've got the pie charm option now for super yeah. power text editing. <laughs> Me and my default notepad. People yell at me about Notepad Plus Plus for years, and I'm just like, "Yeah, <laughs> I, I bet it's great." <laughs> I don't, I don't use it enough to, for it to matter. Yeah, sure thing. So under the game data heading there, just near the bottom, Player there's a bunch no of options dead. that you can set to one if you want them. Player no, so no dead means what? You can't die. That means you're immortal, so your health can't go from one to zero. But okay. you can you can get hurt all the way down to one health. Okay. Uh, exterminate oh, will make your i don't know actually exactly oh. what it does under the hood but i'm pretty sure it sets your damage multiplier to one billion or something <laughs> um okay. and hide and silence will yeah that's your visual and sound uh, invisibility options as well if you want nice and again you, yeah, you can turn these off in the game but this is just for the default setting for starting yeah yeah okay which is useful because you're running around placing enemies and you're like a puppeteer hiding in the shadows just exactly. inspecting enemy positions yeah okay Let's go. We should be good to go. Yeah. Yep. Uh, not that it matters now, but there's also a setting in there where you can change the ID of the debug player. So rather than going back and editing player 9000 every time, you could set up a bunch and just change the ID in that text file as oh, well. Nice. Nice. Yeah, That's so cool. you can test out different classes and things. Okay. So okay, um, I can read, read these now. Yeah, we can read. <laughs> uh, yeah. It's a little small, but still readable. Um, BGM test. I like that. SFX yeah. test, this could come in handy. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure how many, uh, other than the debug in-game menu, how much of this Horcrux 8 was able to restore for remastered, unfortunately. And even in Prepare to Die, the model viewer would crash the game. I think someone fixed yeah. it at some point, but we just have better homebrew tools now. 
Oh, most of these don't work. Well, all right, fair enough. All right, so debug walkthrough is what we want? Yeah, that's right. Gotcha. And then, well, yeah, there's depths, okay. Mm -hmm. Yep, 10 zero, zero. Nice. Uh, oh, there we go. I forgot we have my sound effects, so. <laughs> 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 yep, yep, that's a thing. Uh, let me just really quickly, before I forget, let me back those up in case anything Yeah, no happens. worries. Uh, <laughs> I can uh, guarantee you that Soulstruct won't touch your sound files, but right, right. I, I don't want to go to the grave <laughs> claiming that when you come after me. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to be like, oh, we were messing with it in Soulstruct, so let me just uninstall, delete, and then reinstall. Yep. So, um, yeah, one yep, sounds good. Do, 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 do. Lobos SFX back up. There it is. Okay. Which it's uh, it, it's coming along. It's a lot of it's a lot, but <laughs> it's been fun working on it. I'm excited. What I've seen, yeah, it's it's awesome. Yeah. How much of the music have you done now? Not very much music. Music is really going to be the last thing. Yeah. We've done all of the sound effects, like just kind of the shorter sound effects that have in combat and all that stuff. All we have left really is like ambience. And then after that, we move on to dialogue, which I want to get a bunch of like guest people to do voices. So that nice. should be like, like it should mostly just be me putting in the sounds, which should be fast. And then I would move to the music. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. And once you really, uh, it's shocking how many sound files are in a game, right? Like, uh, and, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's so many I record and I'm like, I'm not even sure if this is used and it's like a really long ass <laughs> sound, but whatever. Okay. Backed up. Uh, all right, back to it. Yeah, uh, you shouldn't need to alt F for the game to reset the sound. I think just quitting and reloading the, the file if you wanted to. But oh no, you didn't restore them. You just wanted to back them up. Yeah, I just right. backed it up. Yeah. Yeah, perfect. I have your stream muted, so I won't get a uh, the, the pleasure of unfortunately. Oh, that's right. We're hidden. I forgot. I don't need to kill things. Oh my gosh! You can, I still, was... you can still aggro them by hitting them. Now, they can't hear or see you, but they will. You're a silent ghost running around, and they will try to get you if you, mm. even if you just, uh, yeah, exactly. Mm. <laughs> and this is a good way you can experiment with the AI system, and you'll see how long they uh, they go after you for. And they do kind of magically know where you are, I think. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Once you aggravate them, that's cool. They will give up after ten seconds. Whoa! Or so. Okay, I accidentally <laughs> clicked the stick, and now we got super speed. So that's good to know. <laughs> yep. Yeah, right. I was going to let you know about that. Yep. So L3 uh, enables debug movement, and that will also turn off gravity. And you can use L2 and L1, I think, to zoom up and down. I don't, you know, it's yep. hard to remember the controls yeah, 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 yeah. off the top of my head. Mm -hmm, uh, yeah, that's it. Mm -hmm. So one reason that we want dead to be, like we want invincibility by default as well, is that you'll easily and frequently run into kill planes accidentally using this <laughs> method of transportation. So yes. uh, this will protect you from that too. Unsurprisingly not, uh... <laughs> Not an uncommon thing uh, that I've experienced on my stream. It was, <laughs> eh, you know, it happens. Okay, so we are we did some stuff with Gaping Dragon last time. What do you? What would you like to do now? So I think uh, we mentioned last time that maybe setting up a couple new enemy ambushes would be a good starting thing. So we could say uh, place an enemy or move an existing enemy around a corner somewhere, and then create a region box that you have to walk in that will trigger the enemy to attack. Sure. Let's and see. Yeah. Well. Good start. Open that. It's the one-way door, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. That's right. I forgot we modified that all the way. But I That's think right. I... Oh, no, I don't have the key for this. Oh, cool. Okay, it's fine. Mm. Uh, another trick. When you have L3 enabled, so debug move, if you hold R2, you'll, you will no-clip. So you can you can zoom through anything. Oh, can I get out, though? I don't think I can get out. Well, it doesn't matter. I can always just no-clip. Exactly. Okay, cool. I just... I, I guess... The Souls player in me is like, I got to make sure I have the close bonfire in case something goes wrong. So, <laughs> who knows? Yeah. Well, if you die, which somehow, you will respawn at this bonfire now. Yeah. Um, but in debug mode, whenever you load into a map, you'll always load at the default position for the map, uh, which the game only uses normally if it loses track of you somehow, like with um, wrong warp glitches, which is how, you know, the only reason you can wrong warp directly into the kiln is because the kiln default position is on the other side of the filing <laughs> door. Yeah. So very convenient. That's Good stuff. Um, okay. Well, we could set up an ambush right here. Uh, right, right after yeah, this sure hallway. Just nice before we point. do anything else, so I think it's worth uh, actually having a look at the event script again. Yeah. Um, 
with all the extra stuff I've added and it should be a little more interpretable now. And you can see all the existing events that handle, handle slime ambushes uh, and um, the, the rats that burst out of the boxes here. We could, we could create more of those if we just duplicated the box object as well. It's a, it's a pain to do this with full screen. That's why I always yeah. do borderless. But, uh, oh my gosh. <clears throat> Are we going to look in um, the... Was it Pi... Um, Pi Charm. Pi Charm. Yeah. Pi yeah. Charm, like Pi a Charm. snake charmer. Yes. Right, that makes sense. Python, yeah. Okay. All right, here we go. So, uh, so we're looking for an ambush event. Is that what we're looking for? Yeah, I'm just looking at the syntax here. There's a, there's a lot of white. I would recommend just if we quickly install a different theme here where that we can actually see the functions more easily and distinguish them from the arguments. Sure. So if you go up to... Actually, if you press Control-Alt-S, you can open the kind of settings menu. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm just going to straight up recommend oh. my, my favorite theme to you at this point. So if you go to plugins on the left. Plugins, yep. And then search for one dark. Uh, so, let's see, search for like the numeral one? Up the top in the search box. Yep. Yeah. Uh, no, the, the word one, one space dark. Dark. Oh, there is one dark theme. That one? Um, It's by... Peter S Mark Skelton. Yep, that's the one. Okay. So this yeah, is going to give us a lot more. I don't know why the default themes, um, you know, <laughs> they don't differentiate a lot of different things that are worth differentiating in the code. But ah, I see, I see. Yeah, this will let us actually yeah, be able to see things a lot more easily. Okay. Applied. Colors. Yeah, we've got more colors. I there think. we go. So yeah, okay. now we can see the the blue function names are stand out a bit more relative to the all the, uh, the arguments. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So yeah, um, you see here for all of the, the event definitions where it says restart on rest uh, yep. above each one in yellow. Mm -hmm. Previously, that was just a number, but I've actually, I've named a lot of the flags for you so that you can see immediately what each event is doing. And that flag name, like defeat Gravelord Invader, that's just, that's uh... a, a variable that represents flag 11005081, which is the event ID. And that's the flag that will be enabled when this event finishes. That's kind of the auto right. flag for this right. event. Uh, I've also changed the way that by default conditions are represented. So they actually say or or and, and you can see they're doing this add thing and you're adding different conditions into these groups, uh, which I remember from last week, it's always the hardest thing to kind of get your, get your head around for, mm -hmm. for event scripting, the way that these condition groups are built. But you can see here, so this is adding two different conditions to or one. One of them is that a certain flag is enabled. Mm -hmm. And the other one is that a different flag is enabled, which is one of the flags I've named. Right. And then main await will wait for the or group to be true. And the or group can become true by any of its subconditions being true. So, so this is a long-winded way of saying wait until one of these two flags is enabled. So or underscore one here is just a variable. Is that right? Yeah, it's kind of a built-in condition group name. And there are seven available that are, have or type and seven oh, and in. type. Okay. Yeah, it's okay. built in. Uh, there's only seven slots of each type, or right. and and for Dark Souls 1. And then there's the special main register, which uh, if you load a condition into that, it will actually pause this event until it's true. Whereas the others will will uh, not pause. Got you. Yeah. And then after that, we have an if block. So that used to be a line skip and I've just, I've uh, kind of quote, decompiled that a bit into something a bit more readable. Yeah. And that's just saying, if that flag <laughs> is enabled, disable that flag. Yeah. So pretty straightforward. That's much, much more straightforward yeah. than yeah. what we were doing last time with all the skips and then like when we wanted to take it out and we had to skip different num numbers of lines and that sort of thing exactly so. yeah Oof. and so yeah this is an event uh that we probably wouldn't probably do much with but yeah as you can imagine sure. it makes it very easy if you wanted to enable all the grave lord phantoms automatically you could just mess with these events a little bit but yeah not the most interesting thing yeah and if we go look uh, if you just you can control f in here by the way it has mm -hmm. all the usual control um you know, searching functions, and you can look for Gaping Dragon, and you can see a bunch of events for that. Yeah, we're um, changed there as well. Yeah, okay, so let's see. So never restart, don't do this again. Flags.host entered Gaping Dragon Fog. Um, yeah, So. and here we're waiting for two yes. things to be true at the same time. We have to make sure the Gaping Dragon is not dead. Now that flag is actually number two, and that uh, that was that's confusing to look at, I remember last time, because it's yep. such a low numbered flag, it looks like something else. But I've, yeah, I've named that here. And yeah, if you hover over it, you can see the actual number value of that flag, which is two. Oh, I see. Flag disabled. I was looking for where it's like, where he's not dead. And I was like, yeah. uh, 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 oh, flag disabled. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So uh, we need 
everything loaded into the and group here, all of those things have to be true at the same time for the main condition to continue just below that. Right. And, and one of those things is an action button prompt. And that's that's that condition is not only waiting for an action button prompt, it's gonna generate the prompt itself. And you can see that we have a prompt text ID so we can customize yeah. what it says. And in this case, that's the ID for um, traverse the fog or traverse white mist, whatever it is in this game, I can't remember. And then, yeah, we have a bunch of other options here that don't really matter. The, uh, the anchor entity where that box prompt is going to appear, that's probably the most important thing about it. That, and, yeah, and that's like a, stuff we looked at a trigger time. box? Like right, right around the fog gate? Exactly, yeah. yeah. That's a, a box perfectly placed in front of the fog gate. Um, and yeah, they have, you know, if, if that box kind of peeked over the other side a little bit, and I think we talked about this as well, using parry glitches to get into triggers <laughs> on the other sides of doors, so right. you actually get, you get the prompt you're not supposed to get. Yep. But yeah, in this case, it's all on one side. Gotcha. Is there any customization of the UI, or is that all just really like low level kind of built in? Uh, fortunately, it's not actually fully low level, but it is in very different files. So all the menus, okay. they're in these files called uh, DRB files that kind of define layouts for menus. Okay. I think they actually, uh, they changed it in newer games possibly to a more friendly format. Mm. But in event scripting, we all we can do is make display dialogues appear. We can make those big status messages appear like um, right, yeah. when you when you go up to the golden fog before you beat Ornstein and Smell. Oh yeah, yeah. And we can create these action button prompts that will just say, a button, colon, and then subtext. Yeah, so that's sure. the extent of our GUI capabilities here. So it's not easy enough to just like, just offset where that box shows up? No, that okay, that's would what be I was hard thinking. coded, I imagine. Yeah, okay, yeah. all right. Or in a DRB file, yeah, gotcha. which just places textures and text all over the menu. Like okay. Cool. Yeah, so we looked at some of this last time, but uh, if you control F for ambush, mm -hmm. some of the events that I've I've named here. We can ah, see how some butcher drop ambush. ambush. Is yeah. Okay. Yep. Nice. So it's easy to forget that. Yeah. I always forget about the depths, the, the little <laughs> upstairs area. I'm always thinking of slimes and water, but yeah. So we can try to interpret a bit of this event, and this one's a little more complicated than usual because it's actually doing two things at once. It's also dis, um, it, you know, it disables the butcher if it's if it's already dead, which is kind of redundant. Right. And um, it this actually everything else is basically yeah what what we would do. So these so. these ands are these auto uh, placed in by you, or is it happen to match up with whatever like slot they used? Uh, it's whatever slot they used. Okay. Yeah. okay. So, so yeah, if you write some, here. exactly, yeah. And when they use seven, that's kind of a giveaway. It's like a sort of a temp uh, check. Okay. And the only reason they're doing it there is that there's no way to skip lines based on a character being dead. You have to kind of build a little condition and then skip lines based on that condition. So it's like a two-step thing they're doing. And they often use index seven for that, just as a quick indicator that actually we don't care about this group. You can see it's a group of one condition. Uh huh. And yeah, they're just using it uh, to skip lines. Okay. And yeah, that, that line skip, you know, I'm, my software isn't intelligent enough to convert that to an indent yet. So right. I'm just keeping yeah. that one around. I get you. Just yeah, in case of mistakes. But you can see all that's doing is if this character is already dead, disable them and end the event. You know, don't worry about waiting for ambush triggers if the if the butcher's already dead. <laughs> Their corpse just, just <laughs> yeah. ambushes you. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, you know, ragdoll fall from the ceiling. Kind of redundant here because this event's going to run when the map loads, and there's no way the character could already be dead when the map loads. Right. So Unless it's actually it's, quite unusual. Yeah, this one doesn't... Uh... This one does respawn even if you kill it, I think, right? So, it does, yeah. yeah. And we can tell that just from the fact that this disabling is not using like an event flag that would stick around that you could use to actually oh, remember. Oh, to, to keep it dead, yeah. But we can see other cases of that in, in the script. If you control F for, I, I promise we'll come back here. This <laughs> ambush is what we're in for. But if you search for no respawn. No respawn, yeah, there we go. Uh, just one word, yeah. Okay. Then you'll see there's an event they use uh, for multiple characters. So this event actually takes an argument of a character ID. Oh, okay. Yep, so you can kind of create multiple instances of this event with different characters. And then it's checking, is this event slot flag enabled? And that's gonna, that, that slot flag is gonna be different for each character that you run this with. Right. And then if it is enabled, then just disable and kill the character and end the event. Otherwise, wait for the character to die and then end the event. And that's gonna enable the flag that next time you load the map is gonna trigger that first check at the top of this event. Mm -hmm. So this is a classic template for preventing an enemy from respawning. And basically every non-respawning enemy in the game uses exactly this event. Gotcha. So the first time you run it, it's waiting for the character to die. But every time you run it after that, it's going to detect this event has already finished in a previous load, and it's just going to disable the character. Nice. Nice. Yeah. 
and if you um, if you control click on that event name, so just after the def, then you can jump to all the cases where it's used as well. Mm -hmm. So this is for depth, so um, yeah. Yeah, just click on one of those. Yeah. So yeah, those Oops. different IDs we can see there, uh, just different one. characters. So I think the channeler, oh yeah, not that one. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> That's a different file. Let's see, zero characters. Yep. C3340002, and then um, I guess you would just have to look that up in like the character params to figure that out. Yeah, you can yeah. look it up in Soulstrike and you can see the name of the enemy model at least. Um, or you could look it up in Map Studio and actually see exactly where that enemy is in the map mm. quite easily. Well, so what? what's the easiest way to do this? Would I take this whole number here? And then can I search that in Soulstruct? This 3340002, or was it only like the first four numbers? So the first four numbers tell you the model. Uh, what I would recommend doing is go to the Soulstruct Maps tab. Okay. Maps. Yeah, so on the far left. And then characters? That's right, yeah. And it's going to be one of the characters here. And these are kind of sorted alphabetically. Uh, so we can go down and we can find that. Attack yeah. dog? Wait. Yep, that's Attack right. Attack dog. That's the butcher's dog. So the the, so the that, dog that belongs to the butcher that doesn't respawn doesn't respawn either. I did not know that. Well, heck. I think, I, I think so. Yeah. Yeah, the one right <laughs> next to the large ember pickup that before you yeah. can like drop down. Huh. I didn't know that. I guess I there just you never. Goes. You know, you 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 mostly notice that the butcher doesn't come back, but the dog yeah, exactly. The dog too. But there's more nice. than one dog hanging around there too. But yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> This is shed a tear for the butcher's dog. Who, Sad. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, he's got no owner to defend, so mm, yep. he's got he went to be with his owner. All right. <laughs> uh, okay. Cool. That's awesome. Uh, the the, the two three seven zero one. I can tell you that's the channel as well. So the channel ah, doesn't yes. respawn either. And the two six six zero. I don't remember off the top of my head. Well, now let's find uh, out. Two six six zero. Butcher. 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 Wait. Zero 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 and zero 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 one. Okay, so the one near the large ember does not respawn. Oh, okay. So but, the one the one that ambushes you doesn't respawn either. Uh, I guess I just remembered that. Yeah. Yeah, I know it guaranteed that's drops right. the uh, the sack, and so maybe that's why. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Interesting. Right. Interesting. Okay. Cool. The third butcher. Just while we're here, you can see there's another butcher yeah, actually in that I did maps see list. That, yeah. Uh, that that's a black phantom butcher. And you can tell that they always oh. have IDs ending in 900 and something. The, oh, the Great okay. Lord Phantoms. Yeah. Nice, nice. Well, that's awesome. Okay, so yeah, this ambush event, you can see other than the weird stuff at the beginning that's kind of, you know, it's overlapping a lot with the no respawn event and we, we wouldn't have to do that ourselves for an ambush. Uh, all it's doing is it first disabling the AI of the character. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Then it's something interesting going on here. So it's creating two separate end conditions one of them is that you're inside a region that I've called Butcher Ambush Trigger. Okay. That's going into that's going into condition group and one. And then we have a different condition going into and two, which is that you attack the butcher and specifically that the player attacks the butcher. And this makes sense because um, you know with the ambush works first by disabling AI, otherwise it would kind of automatically hear you around the corner and you know ruin its shot at ambushing you. But you also want to kind of wake up the enemy if you, if it gets attacked by the player. And so this is what ambush hmm. scripts would normally do. Hmm. Now in this case, we're not just loading both of those conditions into all one because there's there's something special happening after the fact here, which is that skip lines if finished condition false. Once, right. and it's a little complicated and we probably won't need to do this for our end condition. We can just, you know, do A or B. But a finished condition is a condition group that's already been loaded into the main register. And at that point, it's kind of frozen. Uh, it's not being monitored live anymore. It's right, just it's gonna remember its last value. Yeah. And so we can use these finished condition checks to see which of the con conditions actually worked. So we're waiting for A or B to continue the script. But after that fact, we still care about whether it was A or B that happened. That happened, okay. Yeah. Right, because if the player managed to somehow attack the butcher who's like up there hiding, then we don't want, well, we don't want them to jump down. Is that what the idea exactly. is? Exactly. Okay. That's 100% what's happening here. And okay. you can see it's skipping that force animation line gotcha. if end one isn't true. And end one is the trigger that involves stepping inside a certain region. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. So you've got to be careful with that finished condition stuff. Uh, again, it's not something we're actually going to use. And you can see I haven't even decompiled it here properly to the to the uh, the symbol. But right, um, right. Oh, no, actually I have. It says, yeah, input condition equals end one. 
Yeah, so you can see that's the condition it's checking. But we're skipping if that's false. So gotcha. Gotcha. that's a way of saying if and one is true. And it's finished because it's frozen because we already put it into the main register. So so just to um, just to review here, because we've got two ands and then we've got ors. So why? So both of these, why are these loaded into or? Why isn't it just ors in the first place? That's yeah. That that's why um, it's it's for the finished condition. That's thing. all for that. I exactly. See. It's all for that. If we didn't care about checking the finished condition, we would only have the two or lines, and we'd I put those you. conditions directly into that. Yeah, and that's what we will do for our own custom ambushes because you know we didn't care about this drop animation thing uh, so much. Or we might, but you know we can we can start off by doing it the uh, the easy way. So and all that's all that's going to happen is that if you manage to attack the the character, mm -hmm. then they're also going to do their ambush animation. Right, right. I get yeah. you. So I guess the, the idea is if you're doing a script like this and you get down here and you're you're loading it into the the main register to wait, you can only do that with one of these checks. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. So that's why they had to do two ands, but then put it into an or. Well, they load them both into a single or, and then... Yeah. Because the main is waiting for the, for either of those to be true. And the main is the thing controlling whether we stop or go. Right. That's all it's doing. So we want right. to go when, when once A or B is true, but we still want to remember that there were two possibilities that led to this point, and we want to check after the fact, which is why we use the finished condition gotcha. variant. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. So, a yeah, little, little complicated, but... Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, just the way that finished conditions work. And, yeah, but... Fortunately, you don't. You really don't have to use it too much. I just want to say uh, to to people in the chat that yeah, this is this stuff right here is definitely uh, <laughs> coding experience helps with understanding what's going on here. And I do have coding experience. Um, and even this stuff is like like this register stuff is very like assembly. Like that mm. it feels like to me, which I did assembly at one class, and I remember the gist of it. But man, the, it's it's a little. Uh, it's a little complicated beyond that even. What we did in the earlier episodes is certainly a lot easier. It's a lot of text editing, especially with the, the visualization programs we have. So I don't wanna like, I, don't, I hope people aren't jumping in and just going, oh God, I'm completely lost. This is, I'll never be able to mod ever. But this is the the more complicated systems for how to, you know, we're what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a practical uh, implementation of adding a new enemy that's going to pounce on us when we come around the corner that's what this we're looking at the ambush code that they have here not yeah. all of it is necessary but you know some people might want to do some more complicated stuff so we'll review yeah. that as we go but i think the most valuable stuff will be like okay boom start from scratch let's do enemy ambushes from around corner and you can just kind of focus in on everything that's happening there so absolutely yeah yeah, and yeah, I think once we write our own little event here, which we'll do in a second, it's going to be a lot easier to kind of understand because we'll have earned it as well. <laughs> yeah, that too. That but too. just before that, I think it's worth looking at the slime ambush event just okay. below this one, mm -hmm. uh, just so you can see another example of, a, of an ambush type. Hmm. Okay, so <clears throat> to review um, this flag, ceiling slime ambush. By default, when, when the, the area is loaded, this is this has not been tripped. This flag has not been tripped, and the game knows that, so it, it hasn't happened, right? And then this will reset every time you rest at a bonfire, and uh, and I just want to kind of go through this on on uh, so that I keep things straight in my head too. Yeah, for sure. So if it is disabled, which means if this hasn't happened yet, um, then we're disabling gravity on character. It looks like. Um, so in code, these are this is like a function, and you can provide information to that function such that this could affect, you know, more than just one specific thing. So for example, it's for a slime, but we want it to be for a specific slime, slime A and slime B and slime C. And so this allows you to send in, uh, you know, that particular slime's ID, uh, as far as I know, right? So Exactly um, right. So then here we're disabling gravity on the slime, which means he's just floating in the air. Yeah. Disable collision. So you can't interesting. That's interesting to me because can't you shoot them like before they drop down? That's just for map collision. Yeah. You can still attack them, but they won't, um, you know, otherwise because they kind of attached to the ceiling, if they yeah. had collision on, 
the game would kind of clip them through the ceiling potentially. Ah, uh, okay, okay, interesting. Um, and then, and then here are two conditions: one of either happening, just like we saw with the butcher, either the character is within this provided region, which is like you can imagine an visual invisible box that when the character enters this box, that's the point where the game goes, ah, have the slime drop down on, on the player because they're in the right spot. Um, or if the player attacks it, which is what we were just talking about. If I attack it because I see it first and I shoot it with a bow, then, um, and this, this line here is basically waiting. So we provide these conditions here and then the game is like, okay, Whichever one of these happens first, if either or, you know, um, then we'll do this code here, which is to wait a few seconds, which is another um, parameter you're you're giving it or the game is giving it. Um, we enable gravity on that slime. We enable the collision with the rest of the map, and then we set standby animation settings, which I guess is unique to whatever character you're providing to it. I don't know if that's a common thing. Like that, I mean, I guess every character would have standby animation settings. Yeah. So by default, any character in the map is going to just do animation zero on loop, okay. which is its idle idle animation. Right. In in the map data in the MSB file, uh, you can actually set a different standby animation, which it will do by default, like a sleeping animation, yeah. or in this case, it's kind of a hanging from the ceiling animation. So it's not just doing its normal walking. You know, if a slime can walk, it's a sliming animation. And when we call set standby animation settings, if you hover over that function name, oh. you can see it actually takes in a lot of different uh, default, uh, different arguments for different types of standby animations. Death animations. Yeah. But by default, they, they're all minus one. So if we call this and we just leave all those at minus one, it's just going to reset to its default settings, which oh, will be I animation see. zero. So we could actually do like comma and then provide it with exactly. More yeah, we could change there? its standby animation to anything we wanted, and then it would uh, just do that animation on a loop. Interesting. Yeah. And there are things that does, you know, you can set the default animation for taking damage um, or for canceling out of standby. That's like a waking up animation. Yeah. And so, yeah, you'll see that used a fair bit for uh, just changing enemies from a kind of resting to an active state. You'll see that used. Gotcha. And then, so once we reach the end of this whole block of code, which is after we've waited for these conditions, one of these conditions to happen, that is when the flag up here now is flipped to like, this has happened before and it's true. Yeah, that's that right. right. Okay. Yeah. Um, and that if there's kind of a few, a few things to consider here, first okay. of all, because this is an event that we can call with different arguments. And again, if you control click on the um, event name, right, we can actually see those in the constructor. Cause remember every event, all these little events we're doing, they do nothing on their own. These are just definitions. We have to actually call them. Oh, uh, not that one. Yeah. Just, yeah. Just oh, the event oh, name whoops. itself. Yeah, this one. Here we go. Yeah. Yeah, so this is happening a lot. Um, hmm. Yeah, so you can see all the different slimes and triggers that, that are passed in. And if you click on one of those, you see that first argument is just a number. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. that's the Thank slot you. number for the event that we're going to use. And that's what distinguishes the events from one another. And the flag that's enabled when the event finishes is equal to the base flag, which is ceiling slime ambush, plus that slot number. So it's kind of an, gotcha. it, it's, it's providing an offset to the flag that's enabled. And that allows all of these different slots for that event to remember which slot has finished and which slot hasn't finished. So for wow. the, say for slime one, when yeah. that event finishes, it's going to enable flag 11005101, which right. is the base flag plus the slot number. Right, right. Yeah. And that's how each, yeah, each slot is keeping track separately of whether it's finished or not. Now, the other thing to consider here is that this is an event ID ending in 5,000 and something. So that's a temporary flag and it's actually gonna be reset every time you reload the game. And that's what that's why the slimes go back on the ceiling when you reload or you die or anything. Otherwise, yeah, after the first time they fall, and you might wanna do, do this for some ambushes. If an ambush is truly gonna be one off, you would not use a flag ending in 5,000 and something. Okay, so if I, yeah, that makes sense. If I like, you know, if I'm running through the depths and slime drops down on me and I go, ah, crap, and I panic and I save and quit and I load back in, I'll probably load back in right there and it'll just fall on me again with, with how <laughs> it's set up. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Yeah. So it, um, whether you rest at the bonfire or die or whatever, or you just quit out, then that it will reset that whole thing. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. 
And then the restart on rest part of the event, that just means that this event also restarts when you rest at a bonfire, which is not standard behavior. But for any events that kind of set up enemies, you're going to want to do restart on rest, because otherwise, um, you know, you'll get funny behavior and they won't go back to their ambush waiting state when right. you rest at the bonfire. Right. So what does uh, what are all the options for the restarts? I know there's never restart, which is like basically this is something that happens once and never again on your playthrough yeah. or whatever. It um, never restarts a little bit misleading. It actually oh. it will restart when the map loads, which is what I should call that. But I it gotcha. won't restart uh, any other way. So okay. if you okay. reload the map or you die, it will restart. So for things like enemies that don't respawn, period, that's just like controlled through a, a flag that's set. That's like, make sure like, you know, if Black Knight died, then, yeah. ne then don't spawn Black Knight again. Exactly. Yeah. And if you yeah. control F for no respawn again, we can actually um, see... Oh yeah, that's happening. I was like, control F four. <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah, no respawn. Right, and this is the same thing where you you can yeah. So you, you see this multiple, yeah. Exactly, and this base flag is uh, eight five zero, like one one zero 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 eight five zero. Yeah, yeah. But whenever this event is called with a different slot, that slot offset to this to this flag is going to be the flag that remembers if that character is dead or not. I and see. that's why the first line is if this event slot flag enabled. So that's not just checking flag eight five zero. It might be checking that plus the slot number. Plus the, and this, so is this underscore, is that Python syntax? Yeah, I've put that there because that's where the slot number would normally be passed in. Yeah. And, you know, if I don't have it, Python's going to be like, hang on, you know, you haven't got the right number of arguments to this function. Right. So yeah, that represents the slot, which, you know, the slot is never used in the event. Uh, it's only used in an automatic way. It's not like a variable that you would condition upon or anything right. like that. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. Very cool. Um, yeah, the other restart types. Hot Pocket just mentioned one oh. called End on Bonfire Rest. Does that is that the one? End on bonfire. Was that in Dark Souls One Hot Pocket? Because if so, I have got it, but I've, I've called it Unknown Restart. <laughs> if you change. control click on Restart on Rest, you can actually see all three. Of oh, them. Unknown Restart. Yeah. Yeah. So huh. I think uh, back in the day <laughs> we had not figured out what that what that actually did, but I think Hot Pocket is suggesting. Yeah, it's used for skeletons that assemble themselves. So huh. if you end on a bonfire rest. That's interesting. It's good to know. I can actually finally change that after so many years. <laughs> nice. That's someone for skeletons. So I'm trying to think. End on bonfire. So you're saying like, yeah, if the skeleton is, you know, getting killed over and over and over and reassembling itself, then when you sit at the bonfire, if you didn't end on rest, like you don't, you wouldn't want to restart it on rest because then it would just keep, they would keep re reassembling or. Yeah, I'm not sure how that logic would work. It depends exactly <laughs> which event it's used for. I huh. can't remember, because there's a few different events that are going on with the skeleton assembling themselves. Okay. Yeah, we won't get into that. That's probably a whole other yeah. thing, but that's interesting to just, uh, I guess, know that it's there. Yeah. Uh, okay. Okay, shall we uh, make an ambush? Well, yeah, let's do it. Um, cool. All right. So, yeah, if we find the place first, I think getting our yeah, enemy in, the in game. place would be the first thing to do. Okay. Yeah, in the game. All right. So... Uh, if you just joined us recently, we are going to basically create an ambush event. We're going to place an enemy in a place, in, in a new spot, and we're going to set it up so that whenever we walk into this area, it's going to ambush us. So let's put We will have to use an enemy model that's already in this map, because otherwise sure. we're going to run it, run yeah. it first into AI scripting tutorial. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, let's, let's just do a rat, okay? Yeah. And it, is the facing also, um... That's right, yeah, yeah. The, the direction you're facing will, will be recorded. Okay. So we're going to put a rat like right here. And when the player comes around the corner, they're going to look right and be like, oh, no rats. And then from the left, shit, rat. So, I mean, that's that's rats in a nutshell. All right. Miyazaki so, himself would couldn't be prouder of this ambush position. I'm excited. OK, so we just stand here and then Soulstruck yep. will provide And now us. go to the Soulstruck window. All right. Yeah. Stupid full screen. OK. And where are we looking? So first of all, uh, go to the runtime tab. Ah. Hook game? Yeah, click hook game. All right, so this hooks it up to the game. Hook to Dark Souls Remastered successfully. May I use features such as assigning current player coordinates to map entities. For more useful runtime features, use DSDSR gadget. Okay. I see. Yeah. I'm, so now it's tracking I only got that. a few things enabled. That's right. So it's reading the game memory. And this is the feature that makes all the antivirus programs lose their minds. <laughs> um, <laughs> I bet. So now let's go to the maps tab. Hmm. And do you want to move an existing rat or just create a new one? Let's create a new oh, one. 
Yeah, just as, it's just as easy. Yeah, okay. So the rat models, they're all one, two, zero something. Okay. I don't remember the order from small to giant, but if we just look at the model IDs and the existing ones, it can tell us. Uh, oh, wait, let's see. One, two, uh, zero. Just, wait, am I in the right spot? Uh, yeah, click previous 200 at the top to scroll up with more. Oh, you can I see, see it I starting see. at 53. Yeah. yeah, large rat. Okay, that's large rat and then small rat. So let's do a small rat. Wait. Okay. Is small no yeah small rats like the regular size rat right it's not the yeah that, that's, the yeah, tiny that's standard rats. rat okay no the, the tiny rats are actually objects <laughs> so are we gonna now just go to the bottom of the list of rats and create a new one yeah that's probably a good idea and if, if you right click the last small rat mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, we might actually want to right click the last the last one that doesn't end in the 900 id because that's going to have like grave lord phantom oh attached to it. okay yeah. so the last like regular small yeah. rat here we go and if you right click that Oh, plus and copy then, player transform. Exactly. Yep. Well, that's easy. Boom. Yeah. <laughs> All right. There so you go. This, and uh, you can rename that rat. Yep. Just by clicking on it, you know, give it something better than the the one at the end. So you can, you can again, don't you don't have to stick to the boring numbers. Sure. You could just you could name it ambush rat, right. uh, whatever you want, which I highly recommend for big modding Lobos projects. Just, yeah. Bamboozle rat. There you go. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. So we pretty much want to keep everything uh, that a rat normally has, but then we want to script the ambush on it, right? So do we change anything else here? No, um, it actually, so just just click back and forth between the, yeah. the rat we copied from and the new one. Yeah, yeah. And we'll just make sure it actually did set. It yeah, and you can have... see even the draw parent has been set. That's something I worked a, a long time on to read the collision the, the player's currently standing on and assign that properly as the draw parent as well because if you're if you remember right oh yeah yeah um, yeah you it, have it, to be standing on that draw parent yeah yeah that's basically a, a is it a plane or is it like a box is it a, a trigger box well the draw parent can be anything it's just saying draw this part if my draw parent is drawn right uh, in this case the draw parent usually is a collision because the collisions are drawn based on their distance from the player in a rough way it's actually a very manual handcrafted painstaking way but generally speaking so the, this collision is standing on collision 31 and it will be drawn as long as collision 31, which is, yeah, basically just a plane with a rough wall and floor shape uh, for just detecting what, what, what you're standing on. For right. Not and, letting you walk through the wall. Yeah. And so what it is, is like it, it it is set up such that if player is in this region, basically, then draw this because otherwise don't because we want to save on performance. Is that correct? Exactly. Yeah, okay. it's all based on these draw groups and display groups. So there's like it's doing a set union or intersection check, and it, you know anything that has a draw group that is in the current display group we draw on. It's a nightmare, and you know it's not until you get into a big map mod like Nightfall that you really have to grapple with your yeah. own uh, <laughs> existential nightmares. But, <laughs> um, in this, just for characters, yeah, just setting the draw parent to the collision they're on is 99% of what you need to do. Okay, cool. Are you guys doing, um, you know? uh un underpowered pc op optimization tests for nightfall <laughs> that's a good question Wait, yeah so we're kind of system just running with it <laughs> yeah we haven't run into any you know platform specific performance issues yet but that is something we have to do at the last second but you know i am when in all the map work i am not being too aggressive with it because sure. you, know? you could just enable all map pieces at all times dark souls remastered is such an you know an underpowered game yeah yeah for yeah. modern standards that you can get away with it but Definitely worth checking. Okay, okay, so there's one more thing we have to do here, which okay. is assign an entity ID to this rat, because otherwise yeah. oh, we yeah. have no way to communicate with it from the event script. Okay, so and normal enemies that are spawned that just sit there, they don't need an entity ID at all? Yeah, if they have okay. no entity ID, it really limits what other parts of the game can interact with them, particularly the event scripts. Okay, all right. And you can see all the Gravelord Phantoms have IDs because they are all manually handled in the event script. Oh, I see. So we need to find an unused ID. Okay. And... The best way to do that, you can just scroll up a bit and you can look at what's been used, but I recommend going to the Entities tab. Yeah, which you've... Yeah, yeah. I see your Found cursor hesitating. <laughs> and then go to Characters. And this is basically the same as the Maps tab, but it's only displaying things that have Entity IDs. So you can easily find an unused ID using this tab. And the... Um, all right, so let's see here. There so. is a bit of a template system for the IDs here. We probably don't need to dig into it today, but like all the characters typically end in um, zero and then three digits, except at the bottom, you just saw the vagrants. They have weird IDs, but we, we don't, we didn't respect those. Oh, I see. Yeah, the three yeah. and then three digits. Yeah, they're vagrants, which we won't have to worry about. Like in reality, we could just pick any number that isn't already used, right? But it's probably exactly. it's just good practice to do something. Well, I mean, you know, ch 
if I put 69, 69, 69, 69, that's probably something I made. Probably. But you never know. <laughs> so, I mean, here, that's what yeah. we're going to do. 69. How, what is, is there a... We do want to start it off with the digits 100. Zero, zero. That's for the map. Just like the event flags, there's kind of a template system that tells us. Mm. I have actually, I don't know which event which event IDs are legal because there are, there is limitations oh, on okay. what flags you can choose. That's what I was going to ask, like if there's, yeah. you know, size limitations or whatever. So we can just like go down and these are the vagrants, so they got weird numbers, but we can take like the last, the highest one here and then just maybe add, uh, well, I guess it's 960. That's pretty high, but it doesn't matter. We yeah. can put 961 and that would kind of yep. be you the can idea. Totally do that. Uh, Maybe so you can look in the 100 range for this one, just because the 900s are for Gravelord Phantoms. Oh, okay. Yeah, it'd be... But favorite. again, like, that's good practice, but <laughs> if you don't Doesn't give matter at all. crap, yeah. right? I'm just I'm giving people an easy way out, you know? Yeah. So that if they're just like, I just want to do the thing. Yeah, and, and perfect. They can learn through the experience of having, of looking back, you know, two months later and going, what the hell is going on here? That... <laughs> But uh, yeah. yeah, so one, yeah, I mean, 160 is free. We've got 152 and it goes to 200. So we'll do 160. So now yeah, it sounds good. Now I, I think we're editing the wrong rat here though. That's the uh, the one we copied Stone, from. That's fine. So set that back to minus one. See, I'm supposed to learn from my mistakes and then <laughs> this is not, okay, 160, here we go. Now we'll copy this. Yeah, we've got it copied. Okay. Okay, so now we have a couple of options. We've created this ID. Uh, if we save the maps and we export them, mm -hmm. then we are good to go. But if we're going to use this entity ID in our in our event script, then actually before I get into this, maybe it is worth exporting the map and just checking we actually do get a nice normal rat in okay. the position we expect. If we export, we... if we export, it saves as well, right? That's right. Yeah, saves yeah. and exports. And what do we do for this? Is just to save and quit? Just just save and quit and reload. Okay. No need to quit the game. No. Oh. And remember, because we're in the debug, when you save and quit, you're actually going to go back to the default position of the map. But that'll be a good opportunity for me to show you another cool debug feature. Okay. Oh, so save and quit takes us back to the debug menu. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Should I you load can in start, again? Yeah, just end? load back in. Uh, and you can you can kind of get out of debug mode and start a proper playthrough, and it will, you know, do saving and everything. Gotcha. But uh, if you press the back button on your controller, or the equivalent, whatever you're using. Yes. And you will get the debug menu. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And you can use the arrows to navigate this menu. So you go to game. That's where almost everything you want is going to be in. Okay. And then go to character inspector, the fourth option. Okay. Then go to world character manager. World character manager. Uh huh. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And then go to yeah, map 10.00. So you can see other maps that are loaded here. We're close enough to Undead Berg and Firelink Shrine for those maps to be loaded. Gotcha. But we want the depths map. Oh, and then we look for our ID. Or exactly. And you can scroll quickly rat. by holding L1, I think, uh, off the top of my head. To, if yep. you want to quickly oh, scroll. Oh, yeah. Lobo's Bamboozle Rat. There we go. It's there you good, go. good that we didn't give it a ID name. <laughs> so so yeah, go into that. Okay. And then scroll down, and there'll be an option that says warp to this ah, position, or move, move position to, to this, this position. position. And there you go. All right. It's all back all the way out of here. There we go. Yep. There's our rat. That's Lobos Bamboozle Rat. Yep. And we can check the AI works. Give him a little love tap. Oh, yeah. Love tap. He does. Uh, we didn't. He works. Perfect. There we go. So if all you wanted to do was place enemies that don't have really any event scripts controlling them, you've just learned everything you need to learn in order to do that. Uh, Unless you want to introduce new models, then you have to also kind of port over the AI scripts, which maybe we can save for a future episode. Uh, yeah, and um, I did want to mention that if you guys didn't watch the other episodes, there was one where we dove into Map Studio, which is another tool. If you were a very visual person, you basically get a 3D world that you can kind of, you can no clip fly around, and you can duplicate things that way as well and have that save out. And uh, that that makes it even, uh, I would say, easier if that's all you're doing, right? But because because we might be doing a lot of other stuff, Soulstruct is nice. It has a whole bunch of different parts in it, so we can link to that. So um, yeah, but, exactly. But yeah, I find Map Studio incredibly useful for kind of doing research. But for mm -hmm. actually placing enemies, it, ironically, it, it's kind of tough to place them exactly at the height that you want to on the collision. Oh, sometimes, that's true. That's which, true as well. Which can be a bit a bit a bit unintuitive, but um. 
That's I like running around and using the player position, but yeah. I mean you can't but you can't beat Map Studio as far as getting to the real thing as a game dev goes. So really grateful to Catalesh for that. Yeah. Um, All right. Shall we make our rat a little more crafty? Let's do it. We've got an entity a little more bamboozling. So, uh, yeah. Are we going straight into Python, or we still got to do some entity hookup? Um. So let's go straight to Python first. Okay. And then we'll we'll get the ambush set up, and then I'll suggest a little optimization at the end, just okay. because if we want to start referring to our rat by its real name, not by the the actual number we gave it. Gotcha. So. I mean, we have a few options here. There are actually already events that take arguments that we can use straight away for this rat. We wouldn't use the slime one unless you want the rat to <laughs> be hanging from the ceiling. <laughs> Wait, um, but but um, so if you do that, the the hanging from the ceiling animation is that's just is that just one that like the slime would have it, but the rat wouldn't have it, right? So would it just do like a a default animation or something? Or a T pose? <laughs> yeah, a, t a, a rat T pose. Uh, yeah. Okay. Anyways. So. Some, it just on that point, some animations are kind of relative to where you would normally expect the enemy to be on the ground. So I think, I, for the slimes, I don't remember. I don't, uh, I think they're actually being placed on the ceiling. Like if you were to open Map Studio, you would see them on the ceiling. And then they are, that's why gravity is disabled. And when you right. trigger them, they are actually dropping they're like actually an enemy on, drop. Yeah. yeah, but some enemies will kind of, I like the rockworms in Lost Isolith, for example. They have their position set to where you expect them, but then the animation is kind of offsetting them into the wall or into right, the ground right. or the ceiling. Yeah. And so it can be a bit different. It depends on the animation data. Yeah. But yeah, the rat is just going to T-pose in the ceiling and then it will drop down on us, but um, <laughs> you know, the so, opportunities modding gives you. Uh, let's see, was it 12, 1200? Is that rats? Or... Um, yeah, so those are rats bursting out of boxes. So okay. that's not the exact event we want. I think okay. if you control F for one called uh, region trigger. I don't remember what I called it. AI region region trigger or something like that. AI region. Uh, Maybe uh, see, ambush. I think it was just below the slime ambush event. Okay. So if you search for that, you should. Um, uh, region should AI be. trigger. There you go. That's the one. Yeah. So this is cookie cutter, as simple as it gets. AI trigger, and you can see here everything. You, you probably recognize all of this from above, but mm -hmm. I'll let you go through it if you want. Sure. Yeah. Like if this re we restart on rest, if it has already happened, then return, which is basically quit from this this block of text. Yeah. Otherwise, so don't even disable the AI. Yeah. Yeah. Otherwise, yeah, yeah. You just leave right now. Get out of this. Otherwise, if it hasn't happened yet, then we're disabling the AI for the character. And then we are, again, putting in whether the player attacks them or whether the player is in the ambush spot. We wait for either of those to happen. And then, interesting. So enable AI on character, that's it. You just activate them. So yeah, you don't even define a specific attack for them to do or anything. Uh, we probably would want to in this case because okay. we do oh, want I the see. rat to kind of lunge straight away. Yeah. This is used uh, <laughs> just to to limit the trigger range for the dogs and the hollows in the upstairs butcher region, I think. Okay. But it is a great it's a great example of the easiest way to just you know have an enemy kind of you control the enemy's AI a bit more in a hard coded you know or handcrafted way rather than just relying on distance or hearing and things. Right. Right. But yeah. So I think we'll basically copy and paste this entire event. We'll give it a new new ID. Okay. And then we will add an animation argument that we can use. All right. And then what's what's comments in Python? Hash. Any line that starts with a hash. Hash. Will be okay. Ignored. So then I'll yeah. just say like, um, this is for the rat ambush. Uh, I would actually, if you have information about it, put it in that doc string. Uh, you see that gray text between the triple quotes. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's a function doc string. So by default, it just says the event number. But yeah, if, mm. absolutely. If you have any okay. anything you want to add for custom, tell the world rat debate. There you go. <laughs> okay. There you go. So now we want to change the flag that this event uses because we don't want to reuse five two zero zero. And just like with the entities, we're going to have to go and find an unused flag. Okay. Now I've documented all the flags in this. So if you control click on that region AI trigger flag name. Uh. Uh, yeah, the event, event underscore. No, not, not the no. event, the actual flag. The flags dot region AI trigger. Okay. Yep. Yeah, and you'll be able to see all the flags and the names for them that I've put, you know, in the depths here. And just like with the entities, this is a quick way. I've organized these numerically as far as I know, so you can find a flag 
that hasn't been used and that can be the id for your new event and depending on whether cool. you want this to be saved and be a real one-off thing you could use an event ending in not 5000 and something or you right. could, you could end it in yeah 5000 so and because we're basically just doing a duplicate of this i'll probably just make it one more than than the one that was already there and we'll almost just... we don't actually want to make oh. it one more because if you remember all the slots that the events will use for that might actually use those flags because plus one plus two from oh, that event okay yeah so, so then it, that's one more? of the trickiest parts yeah 10 more is probably safe because i don't think the first one's being used 10 times okay but you can always check you can go and look at all the different calls to that event in the constructor and you can see, yeah, see which slots are used. And those slots kind of represent flags that are secretly being used. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. But yeah, 210, I think, should be good to go for us here. And we will just want to give a new name to that so we can call it. And, and you said um, ors are minus, is that right? And then ands are plus? Yes, but with the named constants that I've added, like or one and and one, you don't have to worry about that. Uh, but I was thinking, unless of, you see some of this. in terms of the ID, like if I did fifty one ninety five, that could run into an issue. Oh wait, no, because you're. Oh no, no, those minus ones—they're completely separate from flags. For okay. This condition. Okay. Just, okay. Yeah, I got you. you'll never see like negative from an event. It's only plus. As far as I know, I don't know what happens if you use a negative slot number. It would probably do like an integer overflow thing, and you'd get a ridiculous flag. Gotcha. Um, so what do you suggest that we would name this? Like something like region AI trigger custom, like, or... Because... Yeah, well, if, if we think about it, you know, the region AI trigger is a very generic event. You can use it with any character and region you want. Yeah. And we're going to, we're going to create a copy here that is the same thing, but it also triggers a certain animation. Okay. Yeah. So, so I like would just add something like with, that to the end. Like with anim, with animation or something like that. Exactly. That sounds perfect. Okay. Cool. We'll okay, see. now this this flag is like that name is good to go, so we can just copy that name we just wrote and put it in the uh, inside the restart kind of call in the event. Nice, and that will change the ID this flag uses. Yeah, the second one. Now the actual name that mm. the event oh, that's an auto-generated name. You can name that anything you want. In fact, you can just give it the same name as the flag. That's perfectly acceptable as well. Uh, oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. Whoop. Because the ID is the thing in, in the restart on rest brackets. That's the thing that actually matters for the game. This is just naming, you know, convenience for us. Cool. Cool. And all right, now we can actually make the changes we want to this event. So we want to play an animation basically at the same time as we enable AI. Now we could hard code that animation or we could allow the animation to be passed in as an argument and then right. different, all the different calls to this event for different enemies could call their own animation using the same event. So that, that's what I would recommend. Yeah, that makes sense. So we just yep. add a parameter here and then... Exactly. Yep, exactly. Um, and we can call it, uh, was it animation? And then it's an int. Yeah, yeah, you have to specify the type because, you know, that determines how much the, the data size that that parameter will use. Right, right. And now just below the enable AI, we want to use our good friend force animation. Ooh, nice. Where's animation, and then we're just giving it the... That's all, okay, you can check the context here. Uh, yep, there you the go, syntax. so you know what to give it. Which entity, and we've got the, the character ID there, the animation ID, which we're passing in, whether to loop it, wait for completion, how would that work? So, force animation is a very special instruction. It's one of the few instructions that can pause the event itself. And if you if you set wait for completion equals true, this the event will pause until the animation is finished oh. with it, without needing to use main or wait. Interesting. And that can be very useful because you know if you're playing like a door opening animation and then you want to do something, otherwise you would have to like calculate the exact length of the event like in seconds yeah. and wait for that many seconds. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. And then skip transition. Do you know what that is? Uh, um, it's kind of like I, as far as I know, it's like blending between animations. So if you oh. skip transition, then oh. it will just It'll it will snap. you know. It'll yeah, it'll jerk this enemy out of whatever it was doing uh, immediately. And okay. if you mess around with, if one of the ways you can reliably trigger poop walking is by just forcing <laughs> a bunch of different animations in quick succession. So yeah, watch out for that. But absolutely <laughs> fine in this in this case. I love poop walk. Um, okay, and that's it. Now we just have to actually use our event, so we can go up to where the. Um, Oh, by the way, just just quickly for in that doc string where they added for custom rat mm -hmm. you might want to change that ID as well, or just get rid of it. But uh, otherwise, oh. it'd be a bit misleading. The five two zero. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not named yeah. that anymore. Um, added for custom. Yeah, you can just get rid of that again. It's just auto generated. It doesn't do anything. I'm gonna make this a little more specific. Uh, whoops. Upon ambush. Now I'm getting uh, an error with this uh, parenthesis here. Um, 
does it require more arguments or uh just can you hover over that what if you hover over the where the little underscore is what's it saying where the little underscore wait uh, yeah over the bracket at the end where where the yeah, little yeah, orange yeah, where the error is yeah parameter entity yeah so i have to fill in these wait parameter entity unfilled and animation mm. id unfilled I'm, i suspect this is a bit of a false flag error it yeah. shouldn't actually matter shouldn't i if... but you said it auto saves i've been trying to control s but i don't, I don't even know if that's oh, it, a... it, it it will auto save yeah okay. you don't need to save or anything okay can you just search for force animation We'll see where else it's used in this script because I'm sure there should be a bunch of places where it's only used for two arguments. Yeah, character and then a, a number. So, yeah, it should be interesting. Good. Okay, right. just a bit of a lag in updating or something like that. Maybe but so. It's not a red underline. Red underlines are the ones that threaten ah. to you know <laughs> cause real problems. Yeah, that's and yeah, you can see a lot of like gray underlines just for they they're angry at the naming conventions and things. Which right, doesn't right. Matter here. Yeah. Okay, so we can leave that as it is, and then go and add this event in the constructor. Okay. So if we go find where where uh, event five two zero zero was used, we'll probably just call it below that. Wait, five two zero zero? Yeah, the one we copied from this region AI trigger event, just above it. Uh, oh, this guy. Okay. Yeah. So you can control click on the name of the event, and that will tell you where the function is called. Ooh, that, that's interesting. Now remember, we, we guessed that this wouldn't use 10 slots, but it actually does use exactly 10 wow. slots. Wow. So that 10th instance is going to overlap with our flag. So we're, we're probably going to want to change our ID uh, to 5220. Okay, so let's see. 5210. Oops. If you want to open the file directly that you're in, uh, just on the left in the project window, you can go to the entities folder, and that's where that file actually is. The yeah, I guess with the jumping, I, I get I got kind of lost as where yeah. <laughs> we're actually where we're doing so all we went, this stuff. Okay, yeah, that's yeah, right. It's, so it's we easy had to get lost. Uh, okay, right, region AI trigger with animation. So five to fifteen. Yeah, yeah, it should be okay. Should be fine. I can see there's an orange underline here as well. That's obviously out of date. So gotcha. yeah, there's definitely some uh, gotcha. some lag going on here, but that's okay. <laughs> Okay. And, that, and that's the the beauty of, you know, storing flags in this file and then using the name is that you can change the ID anytime you want and you only have to change it in one place. You know, if we were to use that flag by its number, we would have to, you know, find and replace all and you can run into easily, you can easily run into problems there. So. Gotcha. So. That's why we, we put it in a separate file. Yeah. So this all runs at the, the start of loading the map, right? So that that's these, right. all events exist and then we can, oh wait. Yeah. So I don't think we, I think we really briefly mentioned that last time. Uh, so we have two very special events, events zero and 50. Event zero is the constructor. That's the mm -hmm. main event. And its main purpose is to just run all the other events in the file. And those events will not run unless they are run in the constructor or the pre-constructor, which is event 50. And I think they added mm -hmm. that at some point because they realized that they wanted a way to guarantee some events to run before others. And so uh, event 50, we call the pre-constructor and that actually runs before the constructor. And usually that contains code that manages NPCs in the map. Gotcha. And I think I think it does lead to a difference because, you know, you know, like the famous um, if you save and quit in filing shrine where Anastasia is, you can actually see the item drop briefly and then yep. it fades out of existence. Yep. Yep. I think if that if that item had been disabled in the pre constructor, I think there would be less chance of that happening. Interesting. I'm just I'm just guessing off the top right, of my head. Right, but right. I, I think that's why they use it. We mostly use the constructor. We would only use the pre constructor for NPC manipulation interesting very interesting okay so i've got the uh the the function here that we're going to be defining or the constructor here so we need our character id wait first of all we need a slot a which slot just means, yeah, which was yeah zero. zero and you just work your way up as you do more stuff with it exactly got nothing it. special about the slot it just indicates that it's a separate instance yeah like they do okay so then we need character id is this something we should go to Soulstruck to do? I, I guess so. Uh, or... This is, yeah, so this, I was going to talk about this ah. um, a bit later, but yeah, we can just copy that entity ID straight into here and that will be the character. Okay. And then I think once we get it working, we'll want to optimize a bit by making that uh, character a variable as well. I see, I see. Just okay. like the, the flag variables. And then uh, what else did we pass? We passed an animation to play, right? Uh, first, we need a region, which we haven't actually added yet. So oh, I think we'll wanna, that's a good it might point. be time to do that. Okay. So, so we'll, I'll jump just put back into the game. region and then I'm just putting this for, I think we need an animation, right? 
Yeah, that's right. Okay. The animation you can put in. Uh, we can start off with just attack 3,000. That's like the basic attack for most enemies. Just 3,000? Yeah. Okay. All the attacks are in the 3,000 range generally. Interesting. Okay. So we need to create a box at, at which point when the when the player walks into this box, that's when the rat activates. And then he's going to play this animation and then his AI is going to take the rest of the, you know, it's going to take over yeah. and then he'll just do his normal attacking. Exactly. So are we going to use the player position to find this? Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Yeah. So, so we're going to jump in and go stand where we want the region to be. And then this is, pro you know, now that we're kind of placing regions, it's a good time to get a sense of how large the units of distance in, in the game are. Because we're ah, going to have to yes. specify the size of the box as well. This is nice. Uh, it looks like the the menu remembers like what your last did. So oops, Yes, it that. did. It's super useful. So game... You can also enlarge the menu and you can drag it around if you hold different keys as well. I don't remember what they are though. Like the right stick or something in R2. Okay, where's our debate rat? There he is, Lam Lobos' bamboozle rat. And we want to move position to this position. Boom. And there you go. So we're at the rat. So basically here. They're usually <laughs> a little like generous, so you can kind of trigger it before yeah, you're actually there. Exactly, uh, which makes sense. Yeah. You know, if, if you're running, then you're going to be kind of intercepting the rat, ideally. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, but yeah, this, this is a good starting point. We can obviously finesse it if it doesn't end up being perfect. Sure. So, yep, we're standing here. Just you can jump back into Soulstruct. Whoop. And we're already hooked into the game, so we don't need to do that again. Right. Um, if you, you know, sometimes you'll forget that you restarted the game or something like that, and you might get an error if you try to set the position. Usually, you just need to go and rehook the game in the runtime tab. If okay. That happens. Okay. Runtime rehook. Got it. I found regions boxes. Is that what we're doing? That's exactly what we're doing. Nice. So, yeah. Uh, if you want, you could make it a sphere or a cylinder if you want it to be really cool and like non mainstream. <laughs> but. Yeah, box nice. easy, a bit easier to control the box. Is it more? Is it more performance? More of a performance hit to use the spheres because it's you know. I have no idea. I assume the sphere would be the cheapest uh, computationally because it's basically a distance check from the center of the sphere, right? But um, I'm not sure. Yeah, I yeah. highly doubt it. Yeah. Okay. All right. They almost always use boxes. The sphere is cheapest. There you go. Um, okay, box. So we've got a whole bunch of triggers here. We've got slime ambush triggers. We've got giant rat turns back. Interesting. Yeah, there are regions that are the giant rat's AI references. And that's another thing worth mentioning, that AI scripts can reference these entity IDs as well, and they can direct enemies to certain regions and things. Hmm. Okay. Um, I don't see where... Uh, where's the, the rat, the box rats? There should be a um, trigger for those, no? It could be distance based. Some of the triggers, some of the ambushes are purely based on checking the distance from you to the rat. Oh, so they could just use those. Interesting. Yeah, if you can't see them here, that would be my guess. Okay. But it seems like we could be able to just take the slime ambush trigger and use that. Like Exactly. Yeah. You can see the boxes the are very little. You know, they don't have anything special about them. They're literally yeah. just boxes. It's up to you what you do with them. Okay. So let's... So, yeah, if we want to right-click one and duplicate it. Duplicate plus, and then to next. Now, did that just push everything up one? Yeah, it'll push It'll push everything. It, does that break things? No, it doesn't. Nothing, ref you know, the, the actual index in the, in the sort of list here doesn't yeah. do anything. Okay. It's all about the entity ID. Okay, gotcha. All okay, right. now, a few interesting things. <laughs> First of all, yeah, we need to do the usual, yeah, set a name and set a unique entity ID. And you can see all the regions end in 2000 and something generally. Mm. So, <laughs> perfect. Yes. Uh, okay, so NID, so we've got- So if you go to know. the entities tab, you can see which which um, IDs are unused for, for boxes. Right. The easiest way. Entity ID, uh, uh, collisions, one, one, oh, here we go, boxes regions. down there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So we do have to be careful here because we're looking at the boxes, but the spheres could use certain IDs in this in a similar range as well. Uh, typically, it's almost always boxes. You don't see too many spheres and cylinders with entity IDs. And yeah, you can see there are none in this map. So mm -hmm. not a big problem mm -hmm. for us, fortunately. But again, managing entity IDs and flag IDs is the number one place where modding can go horribly wrong. Mm -hmm. So Interesting. definitely worth putting in a, a little bit of maintenance to that okay and yeah you can see there are plenty of ids we could use here we could just take 2108 yeah like a, 2108. a new ambush trigger something yeah. like that 
Makes sense. Mm -hmm. All right. Two one. And you, oh. we're looking at here for the the lore experts in the chat that slimes. There are three slimes combined into one trigger ID, and it looks like they actually cut out some IDs there and decided to just unify them, which is interesting. <laughs> like slime four five six. Oh yeah. One two three four five six. <laughs> yeah seven. Yeah. Interesting. And we don't wait. We don't need to create anything here, right? No. This is yeah. just like an inspection tab. Okay. Gotcha. All right. So we've got twenty one oh eight as our entity ID. We've mm -hmm. got the position rotation, which doesn't really matter too much. I mean, I guess it could, but um, and then we've got a default width, depth, height, height. Yeah, that's just copied from the other trigger. Yes. Two is probably about right, honestly. Um, you get the player, I think, is about one point eight units tall, maybe okay. about two. So, yeah, so that kind of gives you a sense. Is it roughly meters? Like, if you were to guesstimate? Yeah, meters I, I think meters. it's roughly meters. Yep. If I would, yeah, definitely closer to meters than feet. Okay. Sorry, uh, sorry, Americans. <laughs> Fair okay, enough. now there's one more thing that we're going to get uh, debated ourselves by with this. Mm. And that is just to do with the fact that we are looking for an, uh, a box intersection check. And the, the part of the player that it's actually checking for intersection is at the base of your feet. Right. If, if we place the region exactly flush with the floor, our feet are going to be perfectly on the boundary at the bottom of the box and not actually be inside it. Whoa. And this is, this is a gotcha. Yeah, so what okay. we have to do is actually move the box downward slightly. Okay. And I've added a way to do that. If you right-click on the translate, yeah, and um, there'll actually be an option. Ah. There should be an option to copy with a minus, yeah, um, minus zero point one Y. Yeah. Nice. So yeah, use that for regions. Unfortunately, it's not in like the duplication shortcut, but yeah, you can just go and do it there. Yeah. Or if if you had already copied it and you didn't, you were like out of the game and couldn't couldn't copy the translate location from the game, you could just subtract. You just edit it. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Take away point 0.1 from the Y translate and you'll be good That's to go. Right. Just make sure you remember if it's a negative or positive number when yeah. you're doing that. And then um, and then you also need to be conscious that, may, I don't know, depending on, like, I guess if you, if you accidentally did more than point 0.1 or you need to make the box, like, taller, right? Because if you shift it down and then it, the character's head isn't in it, then this or that. But if you just do point uh, 0.1... I don't think it matters if your head's in it. It's literally only checking your feet. Oh, the feet's so the you, checkpoint. I see what you're saying. Yeah. You, you can actually point. use a yeah exactly you can use a lot of flat boxes gotcha, and still gotcha. be counted as inside them gotcha. but yeah, you, gotta, you gotta watch with like boxes on slopes like if you're doing region checks on slopes and things like that and that's another reason map studio is super useful you can actually see these boxes yeah. and you can edit them properly okay i think actually horcrux is such a legend i think he restored the ability to see the boxes in the debug dll as well wow but i don't remember exactly which menu to go to for that so okay. yeah but um, i think you can do that so that's cool anyway okay. we should be good to go here if we save and export Again, uh, export boom, and then we'll keep this ID handy, right? Yeah, just copy that straight to our new function call. And in, in this region, boom. All right, we've got animation. Could we take a look at the animations? So, is that something from Map Studio, or or is that actually Anim Studio? Uh, that that's Anim Studio, yeah, for sure. Okay, so we haven't we haven't touched on that just yet, so. <laughs> Um, the way it typically works with attack animations, they start at 3000, they'll do like one-handed right hand first, then one-handed left hand, then like, quote, two-handed or like special jump attacks and things. So okay. 3000 is, for most enemies, it's going to be the equivalent of R1. pressing R1. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. And in fact, if you debug control the enemy, it will be R1. Okay. Let me run to the restroom. I'll be right back. No problem. Entertain the chat. Uh, uh, Kalian... The right-click shortcut always affects the translate. I think he did right-click on the rotate, but it still gives you the option to set it from the box and it, it updates the right field. But yeah, it, it did look like that. Oh, this is fun. I'm excited to see the first Lobos official modded ambush event. I'm gonna grab some water myself, gang. I'll be back in a sec. By the way, there's so many of you here today. Thank you for finding this interesting. It's really awesome that so many people are happy to watch a couple guys just add a rat that bamboozles someone in a basically forgotten, hated map of an old game. That's really awesome. I'll be back in a minute.
Yeah, so you can cut a lot of corners when making mods. And it really only comes back to bite you, you know, if you end up building it into something very big. And 90% of the time it's because it gets really annoying to find unused IDs and flags. Especially in something like, like survival mod, where, you know, every weapon you can craft in Elden Ring survival is kind of using a different flag and a different ID. And so you have to find very large ranges of free IDs to use for those. Otherwise, you know, assigning them to it's almost like, you know, computer memory fragmentation. You end up with a bunch of little flag ranges used all over the place, which is pretty painful. And Matt actually helped out with finding maps in Elden Ring that use very few flags, like the stone platform map, where basically all that happens is the final boss fight and then the, the end game trigger. And you've got all these precious flags available for usage in that map. You, you don't have to worry about conflicting with anything that's going on. Yeah, I haven't actually looked at Map Studio in a while. I'm really excited to check out any updates for it that have come out recently. I think my, my versions are dated on my computer. I think I'm using almost two-year-old version at this point for, for Nightfall inspection. I do, uh, Zion, I, um, you know, it's good to, and Matt's the expert at this, he has scripts that will go through all the event scripts and check, you know, they'll, he'll find every single entity ID that's used. And you can tell which numbers are entity IDs by how they use these arguments. And you can actually make a complete list of all the character IDs, all the region entity IDs and so on in the game. And, you know, put those into a big list and make sure you don't conflict with that list. It's actually easier for Nightfall because the game is such a complete remake. Uh, you know, we're basically erasing everything that already exists and we get to start from scratch. And Soulstruct has some pretty deep features that are basically only used by me right now, but you can you can let Soulstruct auto enumerate those IDs for you. So if you just have a list of enemies and you're adding more enemies later, you're using them as entity IDs, you can just uh, set them to auto and then they'll be assigned an ID when you export your, your game data to the, to the game and then you'd never have to look at an entity ID again. It's been working really well for Nightfall. The one drawback is that it doesn't handle AI scripts, so you do have to still use the numbers in the AI scripts. And in that case, you'd probably want to hard code those because otherwise they might randomly change if you add more you know, auto enumerated things. So a lot you can do with it, but yeah, finding ways to make things easier for me often ends up with what specifically would make a big mod for DS1 easier. And it's only doing these lessons with Lobos that's finally motivated me to add a lot of quality of life stuff to this event scripting. I think almost everyone who does event scripting, I know a lot more people use Soulstruct than they used to, but it is a bit harder. You know, there's a larger barrier to entry for it, especially if you're not familiar with Python compared to DarkScript, which is what a lot of other modders use. If you want an all-in-one tool, it's an executable. You know, it decodes the game event scripts into a similar script format to this, you know, line by line with named commands and named arguments and things. Uh, in more of a Java, C Sharp style syntax that I, I'm less familiar with. Um, but yeah, all the same principles, just wrapping your head around the idea of using conditions and building up condition groups and waiting for things to be true and not stepping on the toes of any other IDs and things like that. So if you want a, uh, an editor that, you know, doesn't try to do as much as Soulstruct does and is definitely faster, a little bit faster when you're exporting and importing files, then you can give DarkScript a try as well. If you've used either of them, the other one will seem very familiar. It's just that, you know, some of the instructions have different names, basically. The main feature of DarkScript is full condition decompilation. It's somewhat underused. Yeah, it really takes a, a big ambitious mod to test to that, um, those kinds of things. But I'm with you, Matt. I love coding this stuff. I know you did awesome decompilation things for easy state scripts, which <clears throat> we might look at here in a, about a thousand years or so, we'll be up to the point of editing ESD scripts. Ooh. You never know. That sounds exciting. You heard nothing. <laughs> I didn't hear anything. Actually, well, I had a thought while I was at, uh, so I was also ordering some food, so it took a little extra time. But I, <laughs> for some reason, uh, I had the idea of, for all of these ambushes in the game, anytime there's an ambush, basically play like a, like an orchestra hit, just like a dang! kind of sound and then it'd be a jump scare and then then I had the idea of a jump scare mod and then I had the idea of removing all enemies from the game except for jump scares and then you just but placing them different places so uh, the, the the juices are flowing in the the mod creative category I don't know it's weird. 
Now, didn't you have a play sound function that you can do in Absolutely. these scripts? Yep. You can play any sound you want as long as it's loaded in the map, which Perfect. means it has to be kind of a common sound or it's a map sound. I think you must know the sound IDs of Dark Souls 1 better than anyone on Earth right now. Yeah, there's so. a there's FRPG main is, I think those sounds are always loaded because those are character sounds. So. Exactly. You could add that right now. Just add one extra line to that event we just made and you can play any sound you wanted. <laughs> okay. Uh, but anyways, before we do that, let's get our our animated rat. I think, are we all set to go now? We are. I, I think, think so. As far we've got as I all know. the IDs. We've got a slot. We've got the so character we... ID. We've got the region box mm -hmm. defined. And we've got an animation to play, which should just be an R1. Um, yeah. It might not be the perfect lunge attack. It depends on yeah. the rats. But it's we probably can just going to do this. And, and we, can, <laughs> we can watch him do it. Um, we'll know if it works at least. Yeah. So, uh, so this is all saving. So we need saving. to open Soulstruct. Yes. Yeah, this, the text file is being saved. We just need to use Soulstruct to export it to the game. So if you go to the events tab, all and right, right. we're on the right one, which we should be. Export events. Just click reload and export. You want to reload and export down the bottom. Oh, okay. And we, so we need to go to depth the and then reload and export. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. All right, let me just see uh, 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 a with animation, right? Oh, it's... Uh, with anim there it is there we go I can... there we go yeah okay yeah. nice okay cool so and the fact that you know even though uh pie charm's a little delayed in underlining syntax but the fact that that worked tells us that there should be no issues with the arguments or anything like that gotcha so yep all we have to do is uh restart now we want to be careful here because we don't actually want to teleport all the way to the rat uh, i guess right, to test out right. this ambush yeah very true so well although we zoom could, there we could test it from the back right and then that would allow yeah, that's us... true because it's ai will be disabled either way and we can see it's it's animation better that way, I think. So, did I just save and quit or no? I, yeah, there we go. Okay. I think you did. Oh, I see. And then I was mashing A, so it just loaded back. Yeah. In. That's that's what happened. So, yeah. yeah, let's teleport back to the rat. Let's see if I remember how to do this since it's not. Oh wait. Oh wait, it's already kind of in there. Oh, anyways, move position to this position. We're gonna be on the rat. Uh, get out of here. All right. So. We have roughly a two by two by two bo uh, box there in that entryway. When I step mm. there, rat should attack. Yeah, there you go. So amazing, that's, yeah, fantastic. And he did a little R one. Yeah, it's not the jump. Um, so, and w with how this works, you would need to, you know face him correctly so that he and and position him so that his attack would end like where the the player would be and all that yeah so um, yeah yeah so we could set its position you know its current position might be more suitable for that animation or we can actually i mentioned anim studio but we can use debug mode to test out all the different animations as well oh oh well i just killed him so like <laughs> <laughs> Well, rest in peace. Is there a way to respawn enemies from debug mode? No, I think I mentioned last time that killing an enemy is a very permanent <laughs> thing. Uh, Damn. Unfortunately, Jeez. until you reload the game, just because, you right. know, it triggers the ragdoll and everything. Well, here, I can, uh... Oh. We can do it on a different rat. Oh, they, yeah, we don't have dark sign by default. But yeah, we can do a different rat. So let's see. How do we do that? Uh, so, yeah, if, if you go to the character manager in the debug, as you scroll through the list of rats, this one will actually be highlighted in the game when you go past it. So that's the easiest okay. way to detect which one it is. Oh, and we know it'll, uh, it'll be a... Okay, I see. Uh, 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 there he is. Yep. We got him. So if we select that and you can go down to... Animation? Uh, yes, animation. Debug play speed 1.0. Uh, okay, bones and... Anime? Anime, rat anime. <laughs> I am invisible to enemies right now, yes. That's something we set so that we could just run around and play stuff. Uh, skip amount of movement recorded. Anim slot log. Oh, I'm trying to remember where it is. I feel like I, I haven't haven't done this in a while. We're moving. I think actually I don't think it's in the animation category. I think it's okay. in the easy state menu. If we if we back out of this. Oh, back out. Okay. Yeah, and then yeah, go down to. Oh, how far are we backing out? Oh, All sorry, no. In 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 the inside the rats menu. Ah, I was a bit delayed. Rat. Just not in the not in the animation menu. Let's see. Event AI animation havoc. Animation. Easy state action request number. That's the one. Yeah. Okay. I think. Uh, no, uh, actually, that's not it. Maybe that's not. not <laughs> Special no. effects. Do modders know in the chat? Feel free. Yeah, to someone might remember out. where it is. AI. <laughs> 
Apply multi-doping? Oh my gosh. <laughs> We're gonna dope this rat up, dude, multiple times. That's for multiplayer uh, boss buffing, uh, I think. Less exciting, but yeah. all right. Switch I'm just control gonna boot up my own game. We can oh, just we can just control the rat. The whole time. I might be able to find it through muscle memory alone. Here. I'm I'm just controlling the rat now. All right, so there you go. <laughs> well, there you go. You yeah! can test that. The R1 you... is that. What's R2? Okay, that's probably the one to use. You know, so you can see the ID. Uh, if you go back to that animation menu, it will tell you which animation is currently playing. And you can actually get the ID up. Oh, interesting. Uh, let me un <laughs> take control of this guy. Where was that? Switch control, return control player. There you go. Okay, let me view him. <clears throat> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, no attack, leech effect is walking able net ID. Uh, let me see, did anybody respond about where to make him animate? Because I think, let's see. What about, no, draw, no. Uh, that's just visibility, right? You wouldn't, yeah, I don't think so. SFX variations, ooh. Character basic info, look angles, mm, character IDs, invade type. Uh, oh, havoc. Other menu creation, hmm. A couple people said try havoc. Oh, there's ten things here. Rag. Oh, Have a look at havoc. I don't think it was there. Switch. Havoc character. Slope falling speed. This is a lot of yeah, it's like physics stuff. Debug draw normal no. The floor hit duration system. Action no. AI animation mediator. Upper attack. All these anim IDs. Hold on. Upper attack. No, I don't know about that. In other, press A. Oh. On the only menu option, I'll make a bunch more. It might be in there. It is somewhere super obscure. Table head, action floor, material ID, bunch of resistance stuff. Objects can be moved on. Action floor, material ID, back up. Back up throw animation ID. Back up animation offset. Back up force change target. Map it disabled special attributes, damage direction, damage level. Fine. I'm glad Meow Meritus is not in the chat. He An would be anim very uns Anim <laughs> test? <laughs> anim test? Uh -oh. Here we go. This yeah, that's what we want. There we go. Wait. So, yeah, you want to get that up? Uh, you can hold down some of the shoulder buttons to scroll through those numbers faster. Oh, right. Well. We want like 3,000, right? Yeah, exactly. Ah, okay, okay, okay. Here we go. Yes. Uh, there's another one you can hold that increments by 100 at a time, I think. Yeah, it might oh. be two at once if you hold two shoulders. Uh, I think I had it going. Or it's square. Maybe <laughs> hold square. <laughs> you can definitely go faster than that. Just hold everything. I'm trying hold different. Oh, oh, it is square. It's square by itself. There we go. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it cool. is square. Uh, okay. So, 3,000. Whoops. 3,000 should be just the R1 that we did before, right? There we go. Nice. Yeah. Oh, stop it. Stop it. He's looping it. Oh, God. Oh, there yeah. we go. There's, there's an <laughs> animation the, loop request. No, yeah, no, no, no. The there. one just below it. Okay, hold on. And hold then on. Just, just request it one more time, and it'll... Um, He's Stop going. Looping. He's going back. <laughs> Go back, dude. Dude. All right. Whatever. Uh, Doesn't know what came over it. Other anim tech. No, no, no. Okay. At least doesn't loop now. Okay. Three thousand one is that. Let me... All right. Here we go. This, this should be better. See what you got, buddy. So that's three thousand one. Three thousand two is. Yeah. That's probably what we want. Um. I think they have yeah. a, another leap though. Whoops. Backed out. I'm gonna go check what the existing box ambush events actually use. Oh, that might be it. So we've gotten all their animations. So 3002 is definitely the one that we want. So yeah, <laughs> it took a little while, but yes. So just to reiterate, if you're looking for a an enemy's animations for the purpose of having them play this uh, attack on ambush we're gonna go into game this is character instances 
world character man nidger um manager this is the Eric map the id that's loaded well these are all the map ids that are loaded but this is the depths that we want it's 10 and then you can mouse over all of them and once you once it highlights the one you're looking for go in there go into other there's an anim test and all the attacks start around 3,000 by default. Otherwise, you can go through thousands and thousands and see what happens. Probably nothing in most of them, like this. You'll get a lot of T-posing, and then you'll start getting a bit of poop walking, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like that stuff, so. <laughs> Character man, yeah. Sorry, I interrupted you. What were you saying? Outside um, of that? I oh, just on this menu as well. The first time you go into it, you'll only see one option, and they use that to generate the rest of the menu as well. Oh, really? Yeah, in the other menu. That's why it, can, oh. it might be disguised at first. But the first time you go into it, there'll be one item there that just says generate debug menu. Or oh, like that's... That. I see, I see, I see. Yeah. Very okay. easy there. So there you go. Uh, the other thing I was saying is that I actually look at the event script and the existing box ambushes also use this animation, 3002. Definitely. Excellent. So we know, we know we're on the right track. Perfect. Okay. So now we can go back and edit our, our Python script over here such that... Where are we? Region AI trigger with animation. That is the script block we made. And instead of animation 3000, we're going to do 3002, which auto saves. We go back here. We reload and export. And that's all you need to do, right? We don't need to. That's it. Yeah. Okay. And now when we quit and back go back in, I know it takes a bit. We're full screening, but yeah. Now we should have a rat that jumps forward as we enter that, but we can, um, yeah, okay. Let's just, uh, wee, woo, run <laughs> down there. Oh gosh, get through the window. Maybe you can hold R2 to clip as well. R2 to clip, oh yeah, okay. I yeah. just didn't want to like go <laughs> somewhere I didn't know where I was. Uh, oh yeah, the rats are, yeah, okay. Stop that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Here we go. Here we go. La 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 la. Ah! Rat got. I opened the next click the stick. Um, he hit us. That's pretty good. You know, we're just walking through, and there you go. And if I, ooh. Okay, so let's let's do this. Let's say that I did this, and I want to test this a few times. What's? How can I convert this to a save file? Um, so we want to launch kind of a debug playthrough in, in that way. So if you go back to the main menu of the debug oh. executable, Oops. and you go down to the third option instead of the second option, I think that'll do it. The third option, huh? Yeah. So if you back out of this one. Oh, back out of this. Yeah. Walk there's, through. There's debug walkthrough and just walk through. Huh. But but does that disable the, the walkthrough, I mean the debug commands? No, no, you can still use it. It oh. just it will it, it will save your your character. Interesting. Okay. Huh. okay. I think maybe may worth testing. So just move around a little bit yeah, and then yeah. save and quit and see see if you come back. Uh oh. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you can see draw yeah. draw groups in action action there. Yeah. It's waiting, waiting <laughs> for you to step on the right collision. Uh, rat rats. Okay. Do this. Now let's try to save and quit. And then, so yeah, how do just I back back into the same map? Should work. Really, same map. Uh, I think if if you quit out, that's going to reset it. I think if you back out to the main menu. Oh, let me see. Let me just test it real quick. Like, yeah, uh, just move forward a little here. bit here. So now if I do this and then go back in. Oh no, that reset it. Uh, mm. I, was I in the right one? Remember which of the right option is. It's somewhere in that main menu. Let me let me take a look hmm. on my end. Yeah, because I was just thinking this could be something. Uh, you know, it's e easier to save and quit, uh, load back in, get hit by the rat. Save and quit, load back in, get back, but hit by the rat. And um, uh, I think I might be getting confused with title boot, uh, which does actually you know launch the game with the debug menu intact, but oh. you can't. It doesn't give you access to the debug menu to lo okay. load straight into the depths. Unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so what we want to do? Interesting. Okay. 
So what, what I would do in this case is I would create kind of a dummy character just to warp to, mm -hmm. and I'd put it in the position where I wanted to warp to. And then every time I load into the map, I can warp straight there. Or you can actually just change the starting position for the player very easily to wherever you want to start as well. And then you'll do it. That's probably what we'd want to do in this case. What about, let's see, do, do you know off the top of your head how to, from a fresh character, just warp them where you want to be? Like, um, warp you them can't, right? you could do it through event scripts, funnily enough. You could create a, <laughs> um, but with create it, a, with the yeah. debug menu, is there like a, you know, player, because uh, I know you can use Cheat Engine to be like last last bonfire, you know, rest of that. And no, I'm not sure how to do that with the debug menu. I'm not sure if you can. You'd, you'd probably want to use like um, Gadget for, for something like that would be gotcha. easiest. Yeah. yeah. Use Gadget to or, some save coordinates. Yeah, or we create an event, an event script. In fact, you could do this. It'd be very funny if you want to do it right now. Okay, right? let's Actually. yeah, let's do that. More event scripting, why not? Funny this way. will probably be uh, the last thing we'll do for the day since it's yeah, three. Sounds good. I don't want to keep you too long. Um, made a lot of good progress. Ah, this is this is great. We we made an ambushing rat. We got the right uh, animation, and he successfully will hit us if we run through there. Uh, the only <laughs> thing missing is the uh, the orchestra hit. <laughs> whenever he does that. <laughs> but uh, that should be easy enough to do. I think you know how to add that if you find the right I think ID. I do. I think I do. Yeah. Um, I guess the only thing that I'm not sure of is adding a new sound into, you know, the existing sounds. But that's the same as, like, you know, I mean, you do that with parameters and stuff already, so it seems like it should be reasonable with audio, but I don't know for sure. You'd need to actually open FMOD for that. And uh, uh, export and you uh, export the project. Yeah, a bit of a pain. Okay. Uh, it's uh, there's a lot of setup involved there. Once you get it set up, it's okay. But yeah, it's not as easy as just sound replacement, unfortunately. Okay, fair enough. But we could find sounds that, <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, maybe there are unused sounds in the main sound file uh, compilation, and then we could use that. But who knows? Anyways, mm. um, okay, we're changing what the starting location for the the player. Is that right? Yeah, we could do that. And then if you load into de debug depths, you could you know, Pick you a start spot. wherever you want. Pick yep. a spot, yeah. So okay. just run around the game, stand where you want, and then um, we're going to change a very special entity to those coordinates. Mm. So let's do that. Yeah. And <laughs> it should be easy. <laughs> he lacks vertical information. Shh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, we just need a, an audio focused modder to rise up in the ranks and then create a you know, a third-party program that will automatically launch uh, FMOD and do all of that on its own. And the player just has to go, new sound, and does it all. Uh, yeah, we, we have that, actually, <gasps> for Nightfall team. <laughs> oh, snap. Okay, well, yeah. I'm going to... All right. But it's all just Python scripting, unfortunately. No interface. Yeah, Fair but enough. it generates, it auto-generates the uh, the FMOD project file. And then all you have to do is click export from FMOD. You don't have to fiddle around in FMOD itself. That's nice. So That's super nice. Gets it down to one step. But yeah, we're doing so many new voice lines and things that it's yeah. it was it was completely necessary for us. That's awesome. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Oh, speaking of voice line stuff, I am actually going to be taking some some voice classes uh, in, a, in a month or so. I'm going to accelerate my my vo presence so i'm excited Very to do cool. some of that that's awesome um what was i gonna say i was gonna say something else related to making a mod and i don't remember oh okay I'll, I'll focus on this and then try to remember where am i here i am there we go okay so start you made a few enemies on your journey there <laughs> yeah, yeah it's fine it's fine Okay, so yeah, if this is where we want to start, we can jump over to Soulstruct. Now, I think we, I think, did we reboot the game? We, we'll probably need to hook into it again. I think we are. Uh, yes, we will need to. It from Steam. We'll need to. Yeah, I'll tap forward. So, go to Soulstruct, runtime, hook game, successful. And then what is this? Initialization? Uh, it's in maps. So, it's still a oh. map coordinate. Any, any data in the map has to be in the maps tab. Um, okay. And we want to go to player starts. It's a type of part on the left there. Wait. For the depths. Oh, player starts. Uh huh. Yeah. So that first one, these are like dummy player positions in the map. So that, the one with entity minus one, that's the default position. So oh, wherever you the, set that. This is the origin of, for that right. map. Ah, okay. Yeah, exactly. 
Uh, and then, yeah, there are other ones there. I don't remember exactly what it's used for, but if you want to create, in Dark Souls 1 at least, if you want to create an arbitrary warp point, then you would create a new player start and you can warp directly to it using event scripts. That's really easy to get around. Nice. Interesting. So, yeah, and you, so you could just yeah, do I mean, any, magic. Any, any sort of check. And then if that happens, like if they walk into trigger box, then you just set a player start, or use a player exactly. start to pick where they go. Okay. Yeah. And if you want, you want to add new connections, like in Daughters of Ash, for example, you know, there's a bunch of new warping around in that using these custom player starts. Nice. Yeah. Okay. So just do that and then s mm -hmm. export. And then that's, that's, our, right. that's our new start pot. No, that's it. So pot. every time you load into M10 zero from debug, you'll be in this position now. Okay. And is it just a save and quit to do that as well? So if we... Yes. So it's very quick. Just save and quit and then you can mash, mash A and you'll be straight back into depths. Very nice. Yeah, that's good. It gets you sprinting too. <laughs> so now I can save and quit. We can test again. You know, this character is super high level and, and armored, so it doesn't hurt very much, but it's there. Yeah, stupid rats. Uh, but that's it. That's that's freaking rat that's ambush. ambush 101. This was that awesome. Is, that's complete. Yep, there that's is literally it. nothing else to do there. Uh, oh, there is one little cleanup thing I would suggest, which is, you know, we have these ID numbers that we're using now for our new regions and the character. So we can actually oh. add them to our list of kind of named entities and then refer to them in the event script using their names. And I that see. would uh, save you. I see. Yeah, the yeah, trouble let's, of having let's, to do that. Let's do a little bit of that. Hold on. Uh, I think I can Alt F4 out of Dark Souls now, right? Yeah, it's, I think, I think so. Full, I full think so. screening is... <laughs> Get no. Just getting constant no signals and okay get into the game please so i can get out of the game yes yes excellent so with that knowledge you know you can make everything basically one hit you and then we can create a kaizo mod for dark souls where all you have to do is get from you know firelink to th through to duke's archives or something um, but there's a bunch of traps and you have to do like specific platforming and stuff to avoid. Yeah. Who, yeah. That actually, that sounds awesome. It and sounds think, yeah, awesome. Yeah. But then I, I think about it and I'm like, how could I make it <laughs> fun in as well as just horrible, but okay. Um, all right. So what are we renaming first? So uh, uh, we can leave these as they are. We just want to go into our Python scripts and oh, add I these see. new entities to define the them essentially. Exactly. Ah, yeah. okay. So let's so, say, um, oh, we can even define the animation, right? Well, I mean, it may yeah. not be across the board, but yeah, yeah. We, we could, you could create a new kind of enum class. So if you, if you control click on j even just the character enum right above that, we're two, five, mm. zero, zero. Yeah. So we go over to the characters. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. So you can see this is the exact same list of IDs that we had in, um, in the maps tab of Soulstruct. And so all we have to do is add that new bamboozle rat here and you can call it anything you want yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> debate rat uh, this file was auto generated from the maps data so all of these will have the same name right now but yeah you can add whatever you want here and there you go now you can just refer to characters dot debate rat nice uh, instead of instead of using that id so we can go back to where we wrote this and instead of oh wait oh no we do want to it's in the construction it, it'll be in the yeah it's in the argument yeah. for the, uh, when the event is actually yeah here we are created. instead of this we do characters dot mm -hmm. bait rat boom there it is that makes it yeah. much easier to read and then yeah. this is the um the id for the what's it called the uh, my brain is it's a, it's a box a box region oh this is the region id that's right not the yeah. what's the other id i was thinking of was the where am i looking am i crazy no the, the mystery oh, the ID. entity ID. That's the that's what I was looking for. But that's just it is, what yeah. we're passing here with the character. It is the entity ID of the region. Yeah. Entity ID. And entity ID of the region. And yeah. Okay. So then copy. So we can add that to the boxes enum, which is also you can control click to it just above it. Oh, I see. I see. Oops. That's. Yeah. Those names are directly translated. I don't know why they called the the slime ambushes hierarchy <laughs> A, B, and C. Bait rat region. Boom. Mm-hmm. And just one equals, yeah. There you go. I can't, uh, <laughs> with how my PC's setup is, 
I can't actually press equals because that is <laughs> that's a button I use to swap between PC one and two. The controller, oh, and my mouse, and keyboard. It's my KVM switch. That stuff. explains a lot. I wasn't going to ask. You know, everyone has their funny uh, practices, but yeah, yeah, yeah makes sense. So. Anytime I want to type equals, I have to like copy paste it from something else. So, yeah, we could cause you a lot of trouble by just deleting all equals from all scripts. And where are you gonna that get your be, equals from? Yeah, I'd have to like Google the word equals and then have it <laughs> pop up. I've had worse, you know. I've had a lot of times where I had to pull open the, you know, the on-screen keyboard and like type stuff. This, yeah, I've got a lot mm. of weird use cases. So. Anyways, um, cool. So now, uh, debate rat region boxes dot debate. Uh, there it goes. Oh, wait. wait. When it comes oh, it is. Yeah, you know, it is very case sensitive. Okay. Yeah. These Debate are rat region. Real then, variable names. And then 3002, which it might not be the leap attack for everything, but we could do the same. Yeah. And I don't know if you yeah, have. Yeah, you could. Yeah, you could create any. Uh, if you go look at the other scripts where the entities are, um, you can see they're all just inside these enum classes, which is Python defined by. Uh, they they subclass from int enum, so they're integer enums. All you're doing is assigning names to integers. Control click, yeah, entities, yeah. and then. So if you scroll up, you can see boxes. the classes. So yeah. yeah, you have these classes. Yeah. Um, so that that generate next value stuff, by the way. That's uh, I mentioned this while you're a viewer away briefly, but I have this system to automatically generate entity IDs as well. But it mm. does take a lot more uh, kind of confidence in in your whole project and what you're doing in order to, to start <laughs> off with that. You can set these to auto rather than to numbers and it will auto, you know, it'll enumerate them automatically. And there's a way to synchronize that with the maps data as well in Solstruct, but I don't recommend uh, <laughs> kicking off with that just now. Yeah, but just for a simple thing, we could do class animations and then we don't need a... Oh wait, I, I don't know the Python. You want to inherit there. from um, int enum in there. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. Let's see. Um, it is int enum... It might not be imported in this script. Yeah, it's a capital uh, I and then enum. Capital enum. Like that? Yeah. That's it. Okay, I don't know if it's working. I, there's no braces to... <laughs> wow, this is weird. <laughs> that's, I'm used to C++. That's like what I mostly have done. And C Sharp. Yeah, um, yeah. Fair enough. But yeah, then we could just do like uh, jump, jump attack and then equals, which <laughs> I have it on the clipboard still. Do that sort of thing, and then we can just put in jump attack for all the exactly. constructors. And, um, and I think to get that working, if we just scroll to the top of the script, oh, uh, we can we can import the int enum name from, from, from the Python module. Here? Yeah, so we want from enum, lowercase, mm -hmm. import int enum. Import. Really capital import, wait, sorry, what? Int enum, the the thing we Int just used. Enum. Okay. Yeah. That's like defining in. Yeah, this that's right. C sharp or something. Uh, it's not popping up with autocomplete there because the only autocomplete it has available is Solstruct specifically because it's kind of it's copied into the project and it's, there's no actual Python environment here. It's all fake. It's all uh, <laughs> constructed. So yeah. But it it will now work when you run it if you set your your ID there. You can use animations jump. dot jump attack now. Oh, that. animation. That's right, right. The class. Yeah. Animation. Whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. <clears throat> Animations dot jump attack. Oh, the case sensitivity man throws me off, but uh, I could get used to that. Um, okay. Isn't that the same in C plus plus? You have variables are case sensitive, aren't they? Well, they are, but like you can you can auto tab complete. Oh, without, I see. You yeah. know, there's order probably for... a setting for that in PyCharm, but it's, I think it's Maybe. off by default. Yeah, good gotcha. point. So then we can go here and save export, and then hopefully it should work. And uh, yeah. But I mean, that's, I think that's, uh, those are cool things to know for sure. Just to make it all read nicely instead of just being a bunch of numbers and good stuff. Good stuff. Um, yeah, that was man. great. Yeah, I'm okay. Do you have an idea of what we're doing next time? Because. Well, yeah, there's a lot of directions we could go here. So as far as event scripting goes, you know, with our setup that we have now, you know, we, we could just implement. There's, as far as learning goes, we basically just be going through a bunch of different instructions and, and that, and you know, we can create some events from scratch rather than yep. basing them off an existing one and that, but you know, it would really be covering similar territory, which is awesome because it's event scripting and it's super powerful, but we could do things like looking at AI scripts and that would be kind of the last box to tick to put any enemy anywhere in the game, which mm. is, a, you know, a, a modding, yeah. definitely a modding milestone as well. 
So that might be worth that, doing. And that could be cool. Soul stretch. I, I don't know how um, how much you dabble or how or how complex you think uh, Anim Studio is. Um, yeah, take, we could do that as well. That. Yeah. Especially That's since we definitely know, worth looking at, too. Yeah, and since, since we know how to force an animation on a character, like, we could, I don't know, maybe use that to to do weird things, but... The, yeah, the options that, are... Yeah. The options are, are endless, you know? It's, yeah, we can have to think about it during the week, and... Uh, yeah, totally. Yeah, totally. see what happens. Awesome. Excellent. Today, I hope you guys enjoyed that. That was a lot of fun. We We made a rat, and we made the rat jump at us and hurt us pretty well too and it was very you know we were learning it as we went but now that i've done it it's like it would be very simple to set that up somewhere else like you could just do that pretty darn quickly and now we've got the idea for you know kaizo dark souls that um would be uh, painful but you this know, is the perfect concept yeah and and the nice thing is you could be like well i don't have the time or i don't want to invest a whole lot into like the entire game but you could just say like you know asylum and just do it with just the asylum map and you start the game and get get past the asylum demon that's the final goal and then there's your mod or something like exactly. that exactly that would probably be yeah uh, the the appropriate size for a kaizo <laughs> <laughs> Dark yeah. Souls one. oh man and the thing is you could do <laughs> you could make it so that you always respawn back in the asylum no matter where you died so uh <laughs> you know you're in the kiln like i'm almost there and then you die and you go back to the asylum and you have to start over <laughs> Woof, rough. Okay. You do warp traps as well. Like if you, you know, step oh, on the wrong no. tile, you get warped. You get warped to Lost Isolith or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Possibilities the, are yeah. endless, but the, I was about to say exactly that. With event scripting, they pretty much are, and that, that's what's so cool. Yeah, very good. All right, thanks so much, Grim. Yet again, don't forget, guys. Uh, exclamation point, Grimruck in the chat, or Grim? I think it's Grimruck in the chat for his Patreon. Um, anything swell you got going? I know you've been working on Nightfall. I know you updated. Soulstruck a whole bunch like this. Um, is this something that you're going to be pushing to a public update soon? I know we had one, I think one bug we ran into with the loading yeah, the I, names or something. Yeah, I made, I made a note of that. I'll fix okay. that one. And then, yeah, I'll definitely push this latest executable. The latest Python code is always online on GitHub. But yeah, this executable kind of under the releases tab I haven't put up yet. So I will do that. This is a bit of an overhaul as well. And, you know, anyone, that, I'm sure there aren't a whole lot of Soulstruct users out there, but you're going to have to kind of change some of the names of things to support the new stuff. But, you know, that's how big experimental solo projects go. <laughs> and I think it'll be worth it. I'm really happy with the new, the, the end and the or kind of display yeah. the syntax now. So it, makes it makes it a, it a lot, lot easier. easier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, yeah. with a little bit of more, uh, you know, some of those weren't being caught with like the, the skips. Mm. and But with all of that just thrown in, like, dude, that's going to be really readable and even more exactly. accessible so that's that's yeah. that's fantastic yeah i think if you, any additional changes at this point i'll probably have to delay till after nightfall just because oh. you know it's it's tempting it's very tempting especially with these tutorials we're doing to mm -hmm. keep improving things but yeah uh, the, the, the folks are hungry for full nightfall release and that's definitely my number one priority and yeah, uh, yeah i'm posting little little pics on uh, my patreon at that as well if anyone wants to Come very say hi. Cool. It's always, always greatly appreciated. It's it's kind of funny actually because with uh you know Nightfall, my main stuff is stuff I don't really want to spoil. So all these screenshots with new map arrangements and things, I try to keep quite cryptic, and I talk about the lighting work and things too. But that's good because I don't I don't want any spoilies. Exactly. Besides, uh, you know, mm. yeah, the demo is probably a a good that was a yeah. good amount of early spoilers, but. Anyway, that, that's my number one priority right now. Uh, I also, I know we said this last week as well, but I will try to push out an updated survival mod param that you can oh, try cool. as well. Uh, and hopefully we can make sure that I was telling, sees the ending it deserves. I was telling people that uh, that's that's my cue to basically start working on and then complete ultimately the armor crafting, add that in, and then we would just start a new playthrough because then... <laughs> that <laughs> would, yeah, yeah, that would be a... A uh, good consolation prize, I think. <laughs> if, a great uh, consolation if we prize. can't fix it up, I'll, <laughs> I'll put that code online as well. I don't think it's online at this point yet. Cool. Sounds good. 